scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High. Verse 2. To show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night upon an instrument of ten strings and upon the psaltery upon the harp with a solemn sound lord give us understanding in the name of jesus we have taught here again and again that spiritual growth please listen one of the indices as we have taught to measure spiritual growth god has taught us here again that there are only two scriptural indices to measure whether or not a man or a people are growing spiritually number one is your degree of conformity experientially to the image of the christ your degree of conformity to the image of the christ number two is your comprehension of the mysteries and the principles of the kingdom these two things must happen in your life for you to be said to be growing spiritually if for any reason at any point in your christian experience you are not conforming to the fullness of the image of the christ you are not growing and even if you are conforming to the fullness of the image of the Christ, but you do not have access to illumination, the walking knowledge of the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom, your Christian experience will be barren and frustrated, and it will still sabotage the fullness of all that Christ died for. So on one hand, we must contend through intimacy, encounters with his word, to rise to a point where our lives become an undoubtable reflection of the reality of who Christ is. And then on the other hand, we must have access to illumination, light, and understanding. It says the entrance of thy word giveth light, then it gives understanding unto the simple. And one of the mysteries that we have come to understand that control so many things so many results in the kingdom is a mystery that the bible identifies as thanksgiving now let me tell you something in your spiritual journey you should be able to tabulate the principles of the kingdom that through the ministry of the holy spirit you have had access to versus the results they were designed to produce that way your Christian experience becomes predictable. So when you talk about wealth and prosperity, you should be able to define the principle that governs it. Health and longevity, the principle that governs it. Deliverance and breakthrough, the principle that governs it. Are we together now? Influence and increase, the principle that governs it. If you cannot match the outcomes you desire, versus the kingdom principles that are responsible for delivering them your christian life will be barren because you will largely be guessing 
you see our ignorance in the body of christ is not ignorance of what we want we already know what we want but the mysteries to be engaged that deliver the results we desire we do we either do not know them or we do not understand their operation are we together now knowing them like i've always taught here is like having the ingredients for food if you have the ingredients for fried rice you have done well but that's not equal to fried rice you must understand the combination one mistake can make fried rice become something else one mistake are we together yeah. that's how it is so you must work with god to find out what ingredients are required for the outcome remember i gave an analogy one time i, I can't remember when um if i want to buy if i want to make yam and egg sauce i may be wrong but i think that rice is not needed in that combination is that true so if i am on my way to the market and you sell rice for me rice is good but it's not needed as far as what i want to produce is concerned now there are many useful informations in the kingdom but you have to find out which ones are responsible for the formation of what you desire so that that certain lights are available does not mean they are necessarily needed for this aspect of your spiritual journey when a believer gets born again there are certain realities that are true and consistent with god's character but they are not part of the ingredients required to lay the foundation for his spiritual work are we together now so if someone just gets born again i'm not going to be teaching him on the principles for of, for wealth and prosperity it's unnecessary it's a wrong foundation it's like using zinc for foundation zinc is important for a building but there is a season when zinc is needed when the house is already built then you will need zinc are we getting it now so it is important that as we approach the word of god we stay with the holy spirit to define for us the ingredients required for every season of our growth he is the only one who has in his hands the blueprint of the mysteries required per time per growth you cannot guess what you think you need it's the same arrogance that a patient would demonstrate seeing a doctor when you come before a doctor you don't come and say doctor i think i need panadol no 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 no. you may not even have headache so you listen are we together there are times you feel healthy but the doctor will tell you you need a drip it's up to you to trust the wisdom and the sacrifice of the doctor Brothers and sisters, this is one of the excellencies of working with the Spirit. He minimizes wastage in your life. So you don't invest your life doing many spiritual things that are not profitable. They may be spiritual, but are they profitable as defined by the season you are in? He says the men of Issachar had an understanding of the times and they knew what they ought to do. Let the Holy Spirit be the one to unveil the curriculum of your spiritual development it is costly to guess it is costly to copy you must work with him to define the blueprint part time so there are seasons in your life where he will switch his emphasis to your finances you may feel you are getting carnal he will never talk to you about spiritual growth again because according to his desire for you the formation of the spiritual house he's raising necessitates that you now know the principles of wealth so even if you are fasting he will still lead you back to the principles of finances and then there are times even if i'm teaching on finances in koinonia his personalized dealings with you is helping you conform towards the character of the christ so after you benefit from my teaching when you go back with him he would fold that script and keep it to be reviewed when that season is open in your life and you will continue your dealing on character with him this is how men grow spiritually but most christians don't respect the leadership of the spirit we think because a truth is spiritual it is applicable now no not every truth is needed at every time the holy spirit must prioritize 
tries truth like a spiritual house then you will find out if you follow him i guarantee you you will never miss out on any area there may be seasons where you think you have not known certain things yet just walk with him because by the time you get the basics he will now say this was a simple issue that's why i did not emphasize it in your growth if not we will major on the minors and minor on the majors academically speaking there are different courses and we add credit units to them according to their relevance with respect to the degree you want to obtain there are courses that are one credit unit you can study them in three days there are courses that are six credit unit three credit units that's how it is in the spirit not every truth has equal value they are all true but they do not have equal value as far as the 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 requirement for your destiny is concerned please i like you before we continue to pray in one minute and say holy spirit i embrace your leadership it is it's not just important to be filled with the holy spirit there are so many believers filled with the holy spirit he said the lord is my shepherd he didn't say the lord is my colleague the lord is my shepherd he leads me Habarato satayaba a ship does not have a system of defense it's only defense this is alignment to the voice of the shepherd a ship does not have horns it cannot fight its protection is absolutely dependent on the wisdom of the shepherd so he says like a sheep the lord is my shepherd hallelujah hallelujah one of these mysteries and i've shared it many times i would share it again is the mystery called thanksgiving there is a revelation about thanksgiving that many believers do not understand in the body of christ and so we have lost cheap battles we have given ourselves prey to situations and circumstances that truthfully speaking without any effort on our own would have established cheap victories may someone get this revelation today in the name of jesus christ thanksgiving is one of the mysteries that we see being practiced in the bible again and again that every time a people came to express their gratitude as individuals and as a corporate entity there was such a dramatic response that went beyond the object of their thanksgiving they thank god for certain things and god moved far beyond what they were thanking him for we see this even in the life of jesus the apostle of our faith many times in scripture we saw him engage this mystery and it produced dramatic results so I want to share with us very quickly why should I give thanks why should I incorporate this mystery as part of the principles for establishing the victory of Christ Jesus in my life why Thanksgiving number one very quickly please the Bible tells us that it is a good thing to give thanks psalms 92 from verse 1 to 3 tells us it is a good thing to give thanks unto the lord and the bible says every good and perfect gift comes from above so if thanksgiving is a good thing then it means thanksgiving is consistent with the character of god and worth practicing and worth living by the first reason why you must give thanks is that it is a good thing to give thanks unto the lord it is godly to be thankful write it down it is godly to be thankful it is spiritual to be thankful it's a good thing it is godly it is spiritual to be thankful number two first thessalonians 5 verse 18 the bible tells us there that it is the will of god for us to give thanks first thessalonians 5 verse 18 it says in everything give thanks for this is the will of god now listen the situation is not the will of god your response is what is the will of god it says in everything 
regardless of the outcome it should not affect your response give thanks for this the thanksgiving is the will of God so regardless of what is around me regardless of the outcome it should never affect my understanding and my approach of being ever thankful this is the will of God in Christ concerning you that in all things you give thanks the second reason why we must engage the mystery of thanksgiving is that it is the will of God and we know that the only way the kingdom comes is when his will is being done Matthew 6 verse 10 right thy kingdom come only when and if your will is being done so there is a dimension of the kingdom that needs to find expression in my life and that dimension is at the mercy of me fulfilling the will of God as far as thanksgiving is concerned meaning if I do not give thanks I rob God of the opportunity of demonstrating a dimension of the reality of his kingdom it is the will of God to give thanks number three thanksgiving according to John chapter 6 from verse 6 to 13 help us media is the secret to multiplication thanksgiving is the seed for more whenever you want more of anything in your life the key is not complaining the key is not grumbling the key is that you engage the mystery of thanksgiving multiplication and this he said to prove him for he himself knew what to do i love jesus he inspires me i love it every time the bible says he knew what to do it's terrible to not know what to do jesus knew what to do philip answered him 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may take a little we're reading to 13 8 one of the disciples andrew simon peter's brother said unto him there is a lad here that had five barley loaves and two small fishes but what are they what are they lord i have this little talent what is it called with respect to what i need for my life lord i want to build a house and all i have is ten thousand naira in my account what is ten thousand with respect to seven million or ten million that i need and jesus engages a mystery verse 10 and jesus said make the men sit down now there was so much grass in the place so the men sat down in number about five thousand eleven and jesus took the loaves and when he had what he distributed to the disciples and the disciples to them that were set down and likewise of the fish as much as they would 12 when they were filled he said to his disciples gather up the fragments that remain that nothing may be lost 13 therefore they gathered them together and filled 12 baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves which remain over and above unto them that had eaten thanksgiving that's all jesus did he took the bread he took the loaves lifted it to heaven and said father thank you because wherever there is thanksgiving the grace that multiplies will always answer whenever there is genuine thanks those who know this have changed their lives overnight you see when you study the old testament many times people were punished for murmuring one of the things that brought the anger of god upon the nation of israel was murmuring and complaining is it only moses you will speak to this and that and that and that and they went through catastrophic events the bible says jesus lifted the baskets and he gave thanks the african culture has trained our minds to not be thankful are we together someone gives you one one thousand naira every day and then you now say sir are you not knowing that i'm growing now you started giving me one one thousand before i married are you aware that my wife is pregnant with twins we always want more by placing demands through complaint by placing demands through ingratitude but in the kingdom the system of the kingdom is such that every time what you have is not enough the way you let god know 
is to say thank you thank you is the code in the spirit that says lord i need more you don't say give me more you say lord i thank you for the one you gave me and then he knows that you have authorized yourself to move to the next level of supply can someone say thank you jesus say it with all your heart thank you jesus don't say lord except you are not lord i must finish this year well I must and I must finish no it, it must be my turn to chop no Lord thank you for me to be witnessing the 16th day of December I give you thanks and God will say that's right that is the code for finishing the year that's the code for qualifying for 2017 Thanksgiving demons don't give thanks they never give thanks not one is not once in scripture there are some things demons cannot do they cannot give thanks it's not in the character of Satan to give thanks is anti-satan to be thankful you frustrate satan when you give thanks not only is it a sign of contentment is a mystery that acknowledges that there is a god above you and that that god is worthy of thanks and that he has more than you have experienced and that it is within his power to extend his benevolence to your life say it again thank you jesus the key to multiplication Jeremiah 30 verse 9 Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 9 Jeremiah chapter 30 Am I? 19 I'm sorry not 9 Jeremiah 30 verse 19 I like us to read together it's projected if your eyes can get to the projector screen let's read together one to read and out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry and as a result what will happen i will who will do the multiplication i will multiply them and they shall not be few i will also glorify them and they shall not be small just because there is a voice of thanksgiving to say lord i have just one child now but i give you thanks not to say lord will i die like that with only girls in my house some of those culture driven antichrist mentality lord i give you thanks there are many women who are barren but you have been faithful i celebrate you for what you have done and the bible says i will multiply them the code in the spirit is thanksgiving don't trivialize what i'm sharing with you when you get to a door you don't cry when you get to a door, you don't weep. When you get to a door, you use a key. A giant door can be at the mercy of a little key you can put in your pocket. But if that key is not there, that door will not open forever. The key for more. Could it be that there are people seated here, brothers and sisters, who God is ready to give surprises in the next 15 days. But the, the next dimension of God's grace is at the mercy he says out of them shall proceed thanksgiving not complaining you see why many nations never rise our economic theories are designed to complain we shout and say everything blame who is not doing what blame this a mother is blaming father father blaming mother children blaming everybody and while they are doing that God is looking with all the love in his heart is limited by our lack of understanding the principles of the kingdom lord at my age i'm earning forty thousand. and is that a testimony your name is being mocked and god says my god someone else that forty thousand is his prayer point is what he put as a benchmark The secret to multiplication is thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Number, number what? Number four. The fourth reason why we give thanks. According to Luke 17, please, 13 to 19. Is that it is also the secret to wholeness and perfection thanksgiving 
is the secret to wholeness and perfection write this down it is the last step in exercising your faith in your faith equation the last step is thanksgiving haven't engaged the word haven't spoken haven't obeyed the last step A man of God said this, and I quote, he said, when you are trying to call God, the last digit of his phone number is thanksgiving. Like you press 080, are we together? When you get to the last digit, the very last digit is thanksgiving. And they lifted up their voices and said, Master, have mercy on us the 10 lepers 14 and when he saw them he said unto them go show yourself unto the priest and it came to pass that as they went they were cleansed look at me they were cleansed but not whole to be cleansed means the leprosy left but their hands were still showing you could see leprosy on them are we together now If you saw them you tested them in the hospital it will show that there was no more leprosy but their fingers were still stunted their physical expression still showed that they once suffered leprosy and the bible says and one of them see how scarce the spirit of thanksgiving is only one out of every ten and one of them when he saw that he was healed turned back and with a with a whisper quietly and say i don't want people to know the lesson uh -uh. the bible says with a loud voice glorified god next verse and fell down on his face at his feet doing what giving him thanks and he was an unqualified person a samaritan a samaritan not a jew next verse and jesus answering said were they not ten cleansed but where are the nine next verse there are not found that return to give thanks save this stranger 19 and he said unto him hallelujah arise go thy way you have fulfilled the last step of the faith equation and now your faith has made you whole. Your faith has made you whole. Are we together? Yeah. So you had the fibroid. They operated the fibroid and had to remove the womb. But you are alive. Yes, you are alive, but there's no more child again. Medically speaking. Is that true? The Bible says the woman returned and said, Lord, although they caught my womb and I'm alive, thank you. Take it to the next dimension. I give you praise. And then as she's giving praise and rejoicing, all of a sudden, the God who made womb before makes another one. And I'm standing here only because you made you made a way when our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over you made a way and we're standing here only because you made listen there are many things in our lives that are not yet perfected and the key is although we have seen the miracle you came and you testified yes but many of us have stopped God from finishing you know how you build a house and God has a paint has a wallpaper has a finishing and he said Lord I am so grateful I mean I'm so happy that I'm inside and God says do you know if I show you the picture of this house the, I'm, I'm still yet to paint and finish how many of you know those who do architecture and construction 
that the things you use to finish the house can be more expensive than the whole building so there is more compared to what you've seen there is a bigger side to the miracle you only saw a small piece of the pie but we complain and grumble and compare ourselves were there not nine that returned he says go thy way your faith has perfected you your faith has perfected you Philippians chapter 4 please from verse 6 to 7 still on the fourth reason Philippians chapter 4 6 and 7 let's hurry up please 6 and 7 it says be careful the word be careful there doesn't mean be careless is the word anxiety be anxious for nothing he says but in everything listen listen to how believers pray by prayer and supplication perfected with thanksgiving let your request there is a spiritual formula for getting your request known it says when you bring the supplication and the prayer you give thanks let your request be known unto God then it says the peace of God which surpasseth all understanding shall keep garrison your minds through Christ Jesus so when you pray haven't made supplications you know let me tell you something please look at me the the principles of the kingdom sometimes we look so childish that in our matured world our world of excessive adulthood and intelligence we are unable to just submit ourselves to the childlike principles of the word of god that's why jesus said you have to become like one of these little ones if you really want to inherit the kingdom if you want to walk in the experience of the kingdom you must lay this excessive um um this sense of adulthood we are not children here the bible gives a very simple formula that when you make your requests add it with thanksgiving hallelujah the fifth reason why thanksgiving number five it is the secret to supernatural victories in the spirit the secret to supernatural victories brothers and sisters let me tell you I can tell you this from the authority of God's word this ministry and in my own life one of the cheapest ways to command victories over the powers and the forces of darkness is to properly and scripturally engage the mystery of thanksgiving very very powerful truth second chronicles 2 verse 22 to 24 second chronicles 2 22 to 24 and then we'll look at psalm 92 1 to 15 but we'll just look at 1 and 3 10 and 15. second chronicles 2 verse 22 to 24. sorry second chronicles 20 verse 22 to 24. media are you with us second chronicles 20 thank you 22 to 24. this was jehoshaphat listen the victory that was commanded listen and when they began to sing and to praise the lord said what ambushments against the children of ammon moab at mount seir which were come against judah and they were smitten look what happened 23 do you know while this was happening the children of israel were not seeing it they were at the other side of the mountain giving thanks and saying you are good and your mercy endures forever and then at the other side god was commanding great victories for the children of ammon and moab stood up against the inhabitants of mount seir utterly to slay and destroy them and when they had made an end of the inhabitants of seir everyone helped destroy imagine with me how the last two died
everyone helped destroy another as if it was a charm you just fight your three of us plan to go and destroy pastor alpha we are tired of what god is doing in his life and we summon whatever arsenals we have and instead of him wasting his time on profitless things he engages thanksgiving and while he is doing that something is orchestrated makes me kill her and then i turn and we discuss who dies first she kills me and kills herself now i hope you know that these guys were warriors they were not children who were hungry they were trained soldiers you know how long it took for them to mobilize themselves and say let's come together as a threefold cord that cannot be easily broken and destroy judah the city of praise and while all of that were happening they listened to a prophet of god and he said look set the singers and the priest is that how you go to fight you put men of war and then women and then children that's how you fight war but he says this kind ah, reminds me of psalm 149 it says let the high praise of god be in their lips and a double-edged sword in their hands right to bind their kings with the fetters of iron and to execute vengeance upon their nobles he said to to um, paraphrase it now to execute upon them the written judgment how the enemy will be defeated is none of your business your part is to engage obediently he says having the readiness to judge all disobedience when your own obedience is complete hallelujah this was perfectly adumbrated Ejimi, in the story of esther and a wicked man called mordecai are we together now yeah and uh, haman i'm sorry haman was plotting to annihilate the jews and he leveraged on his influence with the king and while all of that conspiracy were going on news got to to esther and instead of her to go and murmur and say am i your wife or not say am I, you are my wife say uh, will they kill my people just that's how many women will complain vashti did it she was out it will happen to anybody because we are all women in the spirit vashti did it she was shown the way out but look look her you know why she excelled she listened to mordecai the same way the church prospers if we listen to the holy spirit mordecai was playing the position he started advising her right from scratch referred her to hey guy that's how she got to the palace she listened to mordecai at a point in time she even wanted to be rebellious but she came back to her senses and then she went and met him and said oh king i want to flaunt your glory there's I, I want to let the people see how excellent you are king said go ahead and when she gathered all the people the king looked at her paraphrasing and said keep doing this thing every time do it again you see kings were stupid twice in scripture one when they took wine the other one during their birthdays there was a kind of dance that kings received that they did not seek advice kings were wise people they used divination to make judgments so when a king vetoes all the astrologers a lady danced her way to remove the head of a prophet a prophet but a dance removed his head they were dead bodies falling to the earth and none escaped someone here is giving god thanks and you will go back and see a rearrangement that's not how you left things that's not how you left things you left bills you left sickness you left all kinds of things but while you were engaging the mystery somebody is being forced to wake up from his sleep and saying how long will you keep disobeying me you must bless my daughter here's her account number see it in a dream zero zero two five seven one you are dancing here I know some of you don't believe these things happen you see there's a way you disobey god so much that you don't even know that certain possibilities exist 
when Samuel prophesied to Saul, he said, on your way going, it will coincide with two men, all of them holding loaves. They will salute you and give you as if they don't know what to do with it. That's what happens when the light of God shines upon you. Men will bless you for reasons they cannot explain. That's how Pharaoh blessed the nation of Israel. It was like a charm. That's why when they left, he said, what did I do? Something was at work. Released through thanksgiving. When they conquered the nation of Israel and drowned them, Miriam raised up a song. I will sing unto the Lord, she said, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horses and his rider have been thrown into the sea. And God said, you are ready for the next level. When they murmured, they were in trouble. Are we together now? Very quickly, let me give us three biblical ways to show gratitude. Three biblical ways to show gratitude. Number one, we'll look at a few scriptures. Psalm 22 verse 22, the A part, and then Psalm 96 verse 3. The first way to show gratitude is through testimonies 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 are a way to demonstrate thanksgiving and gratitude read with me please the a part one to go i will declare thy name unto my brethren i will declare it i won't be silent god has been good to me i won't be silent and say let them not say i have i'm i'm bragging too much it's not a lie he was good to me he is good to me and i still want him to continue to be so i engage thanksgiving you know sometimes we allow people's cynical attitude make us guilty to sincerely express the goodness of god how many people are afraid to say what god has done in their lives because there are all kinds of people with wicked hearts the moment you say i was sitting down someone just brought the car keys of a house so where is the house show us the picture of the, all these liars who just come and speak you know people are the, the system of Babylon has trained people to hate the joy of others they may be sincere people you just watch someone buy a suit that he couldn't have afforded before and say be careful Lord. it's only God that knows what everybody is why must you be cynical Testimonies are powerful, provided they are communicated with a sincere heart. When your motive is to come and waste time and make noise, then that does not glorify God. But when God has done good things in your life, brothers and sisters, let me tell you, you perfect every happening and the dealing of God in your life through testimonies. Psalm 96 verse 3. Quickly, please. Psalm 96 verse 3. It says, declare his glory among the hidden, his wonders among all people. Declare it. Declare it. Declare it. When you stand to testify, it's not pride. You're not bragging. Provided you don't tell lies and you don't behave childish. You come before the people of God. Look, look what God has done for me. I didn't expect that I would be eating right now. But look at what God has done. Look at the faithfulness of God. And the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Meaning it has capacity to impart faith and reproduce itself. So when someone is listening to you and seeing, let your light so shine before men that they may see. And then through it, give your father glory. The moment you hear the testimony of someone, cancer, HIV whatever and then healed supernaturally by the power of God you now sit down and see how you have been insulting God simply because you have a breast lump and you say no 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 but I mean if someone was healed of A B C D all at once my God is faithful and you lift up their spirit testimonies are powerful brothers and sisters there are many people who receive so much from God but refuse when you were going through the challenges you told everybody 
including those who could not help you now that god brought a miracle he said no i am um, my nature is not to say anything I'm, I'm a quiet person by nature god does not just want you to keep quiet over what he has done how will they attest to the fact that he is faithful are we together now number two the second way to show thanksgiving is to sing praises write it don't wish praises don't recite praises the bible tells us how to praise god he said sing praises turn your testimonies into songs turn your testimonies into melodies still psalm 22 verse 22 the b part and then we look at psalm 28 verse 7 please quickly psalm 22 verse 22 the b part it says in the midst of the congregation i will it is here i will praise you in my room alone i will praise you i will sing in the midst of the congregation i will praise you psalm 28 verse 7 the lord is my strength and shield my heart trusted in him and i am helped he said therefore my heart greatly rejoiced and with what is the tool of praise with my not just the song of worship team there are times your gratitude will compose a song with my song will i praise him Psalm 105 verse 2. Let me give you a few scriptures to really help you there. Psalm 105 verse 2. Sing unto him. Sing psalms unto him. Talk ye of his wondrous words. He says sing unto him. Bless his name. Sing unto him. Let him know you are so grateful you have converted your gratitude to a song. Two more scriptures i found this and i think it was quite interesting first chronicles 16 verse 9 first chronicles 16 verse 9 oh god you are my god and i will never praise you oh god you are my god and I will ever praise you. Sing it one more time. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. It says, sing unto him sing psalms talk of his wondrous works did i we've read that already psalm 69 69 verse 30 psalm 69 verse 30 psalm 69 verse 30 i will praise the name of god with a song i will magnify him with thanksgiving so you sing praises unto him number three the third scriptural way you express thanks and gratitude is through your seed through your giving through your seed through your giving psalms 116 verse 17 through your seed your giving sacrificial quality heartfelt giving not something you yourself cannot give yourself i will offer unto thee there is something called a sacrifice of thanksgiving and i will call upon your name a sacrifice of thanksgiving amos chapter 4 i found this scripture and it blessed me so much verse 5 amos chapter 4 and verse 5 
He says, and offer what? A sacrifice of thanksgiving with living. And proclaim and publish the free offerings. For this like at you, O ye children of Israel. It's not possible for us to get CEV. I wish we could get any other version. A particular version put it in an excellent way. But it says offer. This one you are not singing. Offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving. And then it says publish a free will. It says I also... Oh, no, 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 no. Verse... You're making a mistake. Verse 5. Media. Well, it's the same thing, right? Just, just, it's okay. Just, just leave it. That's all right. Offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving. Do you know, let me tell you something. According to scripture, now, even in the New Testament, men prayed and they sacrificed. Two things that went hand in hand. Prayer and giving. Remember Cornelius, Acts chapter 10. God told two reasons why he attracted the presence of God. Number one, your giving. Number two, your prayers. The, the, the scripture we read before this says how that I will offer to you a sacrifice of thanksgiving, then I will call upon your name. Giving and prayer go hand in hand. But simply because we have listened to people who have insulted every man of God, written rubbish, junk journalism, publish every kind of nonsense to think that men of God are out to just manipulate people. And here and there, I know that you will find excesses here and there, but it still does not negate the fact that it's a principle. There is a dimension of your speaking that only your seed can speak. That you celebrate God and you thank him for his faithfulness and bring out a seed if it's not sacrificial it's not a seed of thanksgiving the bible calls it a sacrifice of thanksgiving i want to challenge everyone here as god grants you grace before you finish this year if not today find a sacrifice of thanksgiving in fact frankly speaking that is the standard way it should be done you shouldn't just talk about it and say wow this is nice i love you too much to not tell you the truth do you know while i was studying this already i gave my own sacrifice before i came and the interesting thing about me and god is i don't choose what i like you may not have faith for that now, but may God grant you grace to grow to a level where you allow God to decide everything, including your giving. He decided your wife, he decided your job, why not your money? You see, the part you have not given God is where you will not get the best of Him. Hallelujah. Something dangerous happened to me this evening because while I was talking with the Lord and I said, Oh, I just felt it in my heart. I said, no, 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 no. The people of God, it's important to challenge them on that wise. And I just remembered, every true shepherd must lead the way. And I said, okay, Lord, so what would you have me give? Very interesting, eh, Jimmy. God did not tell me what to give. He told me what should be left in my account. This is like, this is like maybe 30 minutes before I came here. And off it went. Oh, no, come on. It all belongs to you. Oh, 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 it all belongs to you. It all belongs to you. Oh, oh, oh. So I gave it with all joy. Thanksgiving. Two minutes accident will scatter your life they will use that money to bury you and fight over the change <laughs> are we together you leave it for a foolish person who has no discernment and wisdom that was the frustration of solomon he said i've worked so hard to build this now i would die and give it to an irresponsible son who didn't go through what i went through he said this is vanity 
I'm cheated. I'm still rich, but I feel cheated because I mean, how can I just give somebody who has no sense? Let me digress a bit and challenge you. Make him Lord of everything. Make him Lord of everything. It is foolish to surrender part and leave part. God does not need your money. He doesn't need your fame. Anything given to God is well taken care of. God is a good manager. Our fears and insecurities which are a sign through faith, Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice. It takes faith to give. That you trust God. So through your seed. Let me give us one more. The fourth way that we give thanks is by continually seeking him and promoting his interest. First Chronicles 16 verse 11. By continually seeking him. By seeking him is not like he's, he's missing. Seeking him is simply a, a figurative expression to communicate your desire for the depth of more of him. I'm chasing after you No matter what I have to do I need you more and more Lord, I'm chasing after you No matter what I have to do I need you more and more 16 verse what did I give you 11 not 12 seek the Lord and his strength it says seek his face continually not when the money now comes you know it's amazing how people seek God when they are trusting him for certain things we've dealt with this it has become an anthem that when your pursuit for God is tied to certain results, when you get the result, I'm seeking God because I want to twist his hand and force him to give me this lady to marry. The day you marry her, you set a goal and you achieved it. That goal has been achieved. There is no impetus to seek God again. I'm seeking God because I want to be a millionaire. Right? The moment you have a million naira or a million dollars or whatever, that's the end of it. You shouldn't seek him again. Why seek God when you have all the cars and houses? Why seek God when you have eight, nine, ten zeros in your account? Foolish people seek God for things. Foolish people, not bad people, foolish people seek God for things. Never seek God just for things. Lord, I am seeking you because if you are God, you must give me this pure water. No, 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 no. Don't try to twist his hand. Your heavenly father knows that you have need of these things. It says for the Gentiles run after these things. And your father knows that you have need of these things. But you seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. You see, if you seek the kingdom of God, the word righteousness there, it's not just talking about righteous standing. It means God, God's modus operandi, his principles. You seek his kingdom, his influence, and you also seek to understand his principle. In doing it, you will find the keys that will cause other things to be added. Hallelujah. Don't seek God for things. Seek him and seek to promote his interest. That's why we are called ambassadors. A true ambassador is committed to promoting the interest of the nation he represents an ambassador does not have an agenda of his own if at any point an ambassador is found having an agenda of his own he's a rebel he's a rebel the Bible calls us ambassadors God has an intention there is something he's doing and we must plunge our entire lives to see his purposes fulfilled brothers and sisters listen to me it is not only important that we bless God and thank him. It is important that we praise him with understanding. 
it is important that we thank him with understanding when you thank god in ignorance the power is released through knowledge not the motions knowledge the revelation that backs what you are doing so you can be dancing around and not know why you are dancing and sweat by his mercies and out of his love he will bless you but in his system everything that is not done with understanding is the same as not doing it so if i give without understanding is the same as not giving if i sing without understanding is the same as not singing don't just do things have the understanding that makes them powerful just like many people say in the name of jesus rise up and walk it's not just speaking with understanding hallelujah god has been so faithful in my life in this ministry in our lives we will not only be disobedient we will be wicked if we are not lavish in expressing our gratitude to him not just by dancing but that you take your entire heart and put it on a tray and lift it up to him and say lord you deserve everything i was just thinking of the faithfulness and the mercies of god we have traveled this year like none other the deliverances of the lord you hear the testimony that the lady came to share their truck do you know do you know how easy it is to die when god is not protecting you you can have a boil on your neck and die because the devil takes advantage of anything that gives him entrance people just had headache my head my head the wife goes to soak towel and comes out and meets a dead man thanksgiving we trivialize a lot of things people crying recession things are not going well there are people i think it was eddie one time we we're going to kaduna and he told me that um, some neighbors or so were begging for rice i'm not saying begging you for money you come with a cup and say give me two or three or four cups my wife and my children are about dying but then the mercies of god some of us quarter to it finishing something happens again that was not even tied to your tithing because some of us have not been faithful at all yet his mercies you know when you know the mercies of god you will really love him you will really really love him brothers and sisters in the next two or three minutes we are going to rise up and i want us to so lavishly worship him and thank him just two or three minutes and then i'll just speak over our lives if we miss out i know you have danced you have jumped around but right now i want you to just reflect in one minute on the faithfulness the goodness the kindness It's grace, your grace, Lord, I'm nothing without you, grace, your grace shines on me, your grace, your grace. I'm nothing without you. Grace, your grace shines on me. Sujana nena ke. Sujana, Sujana. Godia nena ke. Godia, Godia. Sujana nena ke. Godia nena ke, Godia, Godia, Suchada nena ke, Suchada, Suchada, Godia nena ke, Godia, Godia, Suchada nena ke, Suchada, Suchada, Godia nena ke, Godia, Godia, 
Sujada nena ke Sujada Sujada nena ke Kodia Kodia Na gode Na gode Na gode Na gode Ya Yesu na gode Na gode voice and begin to count your blessings. Lord, I was in front of that car. It would have killed me. I know it was not my faith, but your mercies. I watched you raise school fees for me in a way and manner. 
I saw that cross waved. Are you ready to worship him? Count your blessings, Koinonia. For the job you gave me. You changed my financial status this year. You opened my eyes and gave me understanding. I got born again this year. I got filled with the Holy Ghost this year. I understood the word of God this year. For multiplied grace. For uncommon influence. Tell him thank you. My father and my mother came back this year. They were at the verge of the force. But by your grace you stepped in. Worship him. Jesus I say thank you. I never had any plane crash. No car accident. You gave me a new house this year. You gave me accurate knowledge. Jesus, victory belongs to him. Oh, 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 oh. victory belongs to Jesus over my life. I watch the power of witchcraft broken. Oh, oh, oh. Victory belongs to him. Come on, worship him, Koinonia. Victory belongs to Jesus. Sing it from the depth of your heart. Hey, oh. For the next two minutes, we are going to thank God as a family. We have seen the hand of God in mysterious ways this year. Miracles upon miracles changed lives. Men and women here bodily entered into dimensions in the spirit. Lift your voice and thank God for Koinonia, for victory, for victory, for influence. For grace, ha. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Oh, oh, oh. of your heart. Hallelujah. You know, brothers and sisters, time will fail me to begin to tell you the things that God has done for us as a ministry influence favor access multiplication of grace when the media department was submitting a progress report preparing for the dinner one of the most touching testimonies is that as far as 
the moment any teaching is uploaded online an average of 1 million downloads within the first 24 hours no publicity no sir if I by the finger of God brothers and sisters we have seen answered prayers it was here you dropped the request yet the answer was waiting for you at home and you saw miracles people transformed by the hand of God I don't know about you but brothers and sisters help me thank this God in one minute and say Lord thank you epochal teachings that have come the mysteries of the kingdom building men and women some of you have seen your lives changed you've seen the anointing at work in your life mighty dimensions of grace thank you Jesus hallelujah one last prayer point I want you to thank God for your family I know some of them are not here on their behalf if you ever lie to me and say you did not see his hand this year you will not be fair you know what January was you know what December is right now lift your voice and say father thank you thank you thank you thank you shaka tabarata thank you thank you thank you mighty god mighty god thank you for our families many god born again this year many god filled with the holy spirit many found direction for their lives the words you speak turns things around help me advance to thank him for the balance of the year into 2017 because you must get there don't ask don't ask lift your voice and say lord i thank you your promises are yea and amen and i say thank you no devil will stop my eyes from seeing i give you praise i give you praise i give you praise I give you praise in advance that sickness will not go with me to 2017 I give you praise are you giving him praise Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have given God praise. I want to release something upon your life that you will take back home. For when you give Him praise, you provoke a dimension of His glory, you provoke a dimension of His grace. I want to pray for you from the depth of my heart.
you have given thanks it's time for you to carry the anointing and the grace that will help you finish so that you don't go home crying again you go as an ambassador listen listen on Tuesday I had a great time in the prayer department inside outside any of the overflows I want you to be very sensitive now I want to pray for you the prayer department I had a great time with them and one of the things I shared with them listen is that the level of grace and unction you carry defines your possibilities in this kingdom not just the name of Jesus listen please our possibilities are defined by the level and the kind of unction that is at work in our lives are we together now mm. hundred dollars and hundred naira are all the same denominations but not the same value are you getting what I'm saying now every challenge you face that is lower than the level of the grace and unction you carry will be solved but every challenge you face that is higher than the level of grace and unction you carry will not be solved scripturally you will see that it should be solved but the dynamics of bringing the result to your life is that you must upgrade through understanding and impartation to a level that will afford God to release the possibilities at the level that you desire are we together now our lives are limited by the level of grace and unction that we carry from January to December God has been faithful over our lives some of you now are going home there are all kinds of yokes of darkness waiting to mock God like they did last year but you are going back with an unction so that what could not happen last year I want you to believe what I'm telling you our possibilities there are some of you if you do not introduce the anointing you are about to receive in your family they will not celebrate Christmas well because there are orchestrations of hell but for your presence and so you appear there and introduce a mystery that disarms principalities and powers your understanding and the anointing are the keys you need to command victory your understanding and the anointing not just the anointing not just your understanding they work together like your left and right hand so an anointed life with a wrong paradigm will limit its operation a healthy paradigm with no anointing will stimulate the the expectation of possibilities that may never happen you need both a renewed mind which you have received all through this year please i'd like you to pray one minute with your heart open and say lord i desire this grace let let it come upon my life and make the difference the difference i have given you praise please pray hallelujah hallelujah i will speak over everyone but let me just pray for the heads of department just the heads of departments and the maybe the ministers please quickly quickly just in one minute i feel like doing that for them and then i'll just pray for everybody at grace There is an unction from the Holy One. They have walked in measures of grace. Join them, Pastor Alpha. Femi, join them. Promise, join them. Father, you have honored this house. You have brought grace upon us. Lord, I pray that the leaders will carry strange levels of grace. Please believe what is coming on you. Don't trivialize it. I will pray for you. Strange grace. Grace. Strange grace. Strange grace. Strange grace. Strange grace. Strange grace. 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 In the name of
of Jesus. for the next level from your spirit man in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ strange grace strange grace by the power of the Holy Ghost fire strange grace 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 for the next level in the name of Jesus Christ fresh grace fresh grace fresh grace fresh grace for the next level lift your hands please everyone lift your hands in the name of Jesus the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing smoke and it's coming on people the Lord is saying this is a prophetic grace Lord I release my hands right now receive that grace right now receive that grace right now take it I place it upon your spirit receive that grace prophetic grace privy to insights in the spirit privy to insights in the spirit receive that grace right now receive that grace right now receive that grace right now i want to pray a prayer that everyone should release there is a grace that releases the creative power of the word of god not the revelatory power revelation informs creation makes if i tell you god said this will happen listen i want you to believe me i'm about to release something on your life that when you speak there is a kind of unction that can leave your words and create realities not inform people it will happen i stand in the name of jesus under this apostolic and prophetic anointing father inside and outside let men be baptized into this realm of reality receive that baptism right now creative dimensions creative dimensions inside outside receive it in the name of jesus 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 it's not just speaking there is a level of grace i want to pray for you god has shown me favor this year in my life in a way and a dimension that i can only give him glory father i pray that esther anointing that causes men to arise mysteriously in the name of jesus take that anointing to your homes take it in your life Papa, take it, take it. You can't stand it. It must come upon you. It will land upon your spirit, man. That Esther anointing. That Esther anointing. Help them, please. Please help that lady somewhere. In the name of Jesus. Aaron, that anointing is coming on your wife. An angel of the Lord is pouring that oil upon your wife. It's a new season of favor. A strange season of favor. A strange season of favor. A strange season of favor. I hear my spirit restoration. 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 The mantle is falling. Restoration. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Restoration inside and outside. I don't care what has left you. Help that mother please. Restoration of gifts. Restoration of dimensions. Restoration of levels in the spirit you once carried that have left you. I release that grace on you right now. Strange restoration. A level of wisdom that you have never seen in your life illumination by the spirit to know what to do part time wisdom manifesting as divine direction ah, yeah, 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 yeah. divine strategies receive it right now in the name of jesus know what to do 
I command your spirit to know what to do by the illumination of the word of God. I put the word of God upon your spirit and I command access to light, access to illumination. Every prophetic word that came upon your life in January and is yet to find expression in the name of the Lord God of heavens between now and 31st December let there be a performance a strange performance a strange performance a strange performance I pray for you the mystery of exemption that when men say there is a casting down there is an anointing that can exempt men I decree and declare that as that unction comes upon you you are strangely and evidently exempted strangely and evidently exempted in the name of Jesus I'm praying anyone here being eyed by the spirit of death the spirit that snatches the lives of men 28, 29, 30th where men die some even December 31st by 6 o'clock I command in the name of Jesus I forbid the earth from taking the body of anyone anyone marked for death here I extend your life by the word of the Lord I extend your life in the name of Jesus Christ I want to pray for you listen some of us are going to the village now listen we are not in darkness as to the wickedness that is in villages the Spirit of God is doing something in this lady there is restoration that God is bringing there are people who are going to villages and there are wicked spirits enforced by the presence of men don't say it does not exist that snatches the way people go peacefully and return back divorced I pray for you whoever plays with your life I stand upon this altar I command the earth to open up and swallow them I say it again any man that makes any enchantment any invocation over you or your loved ones the earth will open and swallow them I was talking with a lady today we're rounding up who shared something very touching with me where she comes from there are certain rules and regulation there are some trees you don't touch you touch those trees by mistake you pay for it with barrenness or something mysterious so if you mistakenly just see orange or guava and you decide to pluck it and eat it that will be the end of it she said the ground the soil where their compound is their house that you can stand there if anybody stands on it or something and makes invocation except somebody anointed intervenes it must happen and then some I think a relative to them now went and stood there and made a pronouncement over the family whether there was something about building house and he said whoever builds that house that as he's reaching sink level let the person die I said they should go to the village and tell that man that they met someone called Joshua Selman searched through witchcraft they call your name they die like chickens I tell you they call your name they die like chickens listen don't let men threaten you with nonsense value what you have a man born of a woman it exists 
and it will work until your light bails you out but let me tell you something i say it again i don't know who has said what job said he will deliver you from the scourging tongues of men i decree and declare and i reverse any pronouncement made over any family in the name of jesus christ hallelujah a lady told me something the other day that there is i think a clan or a family where some people come from whether they are cursed or something they they cannot marry they can't do I, I think she was telling me something like that for doing nothing once you are born into that family they say a curse is on you and truthfully speaking if someone marries you or whatever it is that's the end of it now what did you do wrong did you decide your bet somebody did something somewhere and now you are a victim of a stupid statement everybody shout no way shout it no way listen some of you have allowed that lie that's why you don't prosper hold on please let me just talk for one minute this thing is boiling my spirit there are people who will not break certain barriers because someone has indoctrinated you into believing that there is a covenant of poverty and truthfully the devil has leveraged on your thinking and you are seeing it happen and it's true there are families like that you do everything it will not work but in the name of jesus the son of the living god i prophesy over your life i don't care how long it has been break that barrier in the name of jesus break that barrier in the name of jesus listen don't think i'm just talking i understand witchcraft i've told you my grandmother was an idol worshiper she used to brew beer for masquerades so don't think that they gave back to me inside plane i was just flying and enjoying myself i've told you how demons witches and wizards used to oppress me as a man of god preaching with anointing come on now whatever the devil has taken from you i don't care when in the name of jesus the bible says if you catch a thief he must return tenfold i command supernatural restoration now this year will not end till you are restored fully restored Hallelujah. finally i pray for you the grace that distinguishes men is called the oil of gladness therefore god even thy god has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fellows not for the purpose of competition but to set a standard that is established in righteousness i pray for you in the name of jesus the grace that has distinguished this ministry may that grace start walking and speaking in your life from today in this end time there are realms that not even prayer warriors can get there there are realms that not even what giants can get there it is a realm where only lovers it says no eye has seen revelation cannot take you there nor ear heard neither has it come into the heart of anyone what god has in store not for them that pray not for them that go to church not for them that fast but them that love him you can do all of these activities from a religious standpoint i challenge you in all your doing and in all your living love jesus don't just say i love god god means many things we're talking jesus the one who has been exalted today who is both lord and christ and perhaps you are here you came for koinonia you are in any of the overflows down to the basement outside following from all across the world you are yet to make this decision somewhere in the course of my teaching i'm going to be making an altar call and when you hear that call do not harden your hearts the bible says run like there's fire on the mountain when that call is made 
and come to Jesus and begin a real journey that has eternal value our love for Jesus the second thing very quickly that I spoke about on Friday was a call to effective living the Lord began to put a burden in my heart there are many many people who are not living effectively effective living means living with intention and living with a sense of purpose and destiny the Bible says except the Lord builds a house they labor in vain that build it except the Lord watches over a city he said the watchmen watch it but in vain it is vain to wake up early in the morning to sleep late at night only to eat the bread of sorrow there are so many people this is take it as a miracle service message too effective living gallivanting from pillar to post and the only thing growing in your life is your age nothing else is growing there has to be a call to effective living it says lo i come in the volume of the book as it is written of me we must trust god for grace to bring to end this living of nonchalance and lack of purpose and intention rigma rolling and freelancing around life what are you living for nothing what are you pursuing nothing what is the project destiny project you are embarking on part time nothing especially to my generation of young people we must obtain grace to sit down and i love social media i, I believe it is a blessing but in the name of jesus and in the name of honesty part of the miracles that we must receive tonight is the grace to manage our lives as far as internet social media and all these things are concerned don't misunderstand me i believe there is a blessing to these things if managed there is a dangerous spirit of destruction that is literally eating up people the unit of destiny is time whatever you give your time to you are giving part of your life to and you must be sure and insist that you are giving part of your life to what is worth it i'm amazed at the extent of visionless living that we have in our society we must trust god for grace to live effectively I learned effective living from Dr. Miles Monroe. Bless his heart. Buy books that teach you how to live effectively. Have goals for your life. Have projects per time, per season that you are embarking on. Run away from a life that does not have something motivating you. You cannot freelance through life and want to live victoriously. Hallelujah. A great man said at the end of our lives there are two things we are going to be remembered for the problems we solved the solutions that we birthed or the problems we created we used to sing a hymn those days in the seminary it says thus till we pass um, how, how does how does he put it only to be remembered by what we have done You must make sure that your life is governed by three factors. Number one, the fear of the Lord. Number two, conscience. Number three, a sense of posterity. And then number three, which was quite an important one that I spoke about in that broadcast, was the need for a greater sense of love and unity within the body of Christ. The Holy Spirit has put this burden in my heart for years and it's been my advocacy for a long time that the body of Christ as a corporate entity, as the bride of Christ, needs to come into a higher and more intentional level of unity. There is so much we can do as a united force. There is so little we can do as individuals. There are dimensions of the glory and the power of God 
that cannot be birthed by a single individual no matter how effective it will take the corporate body to be able to reveal that dimension of god and here and there you hear teachings that attempt to bring a greater sense of cohesion within the body of christ but i think that um we shouldn't just talk about unity but we should help to supply a few keys and so i thought that in this broadcast i would bring two or three keys that would help the body of christ come into a sense of unity these are the keys that without them i do not see um the project for unity and love as a project that is doable without these keys let me run through these three keys are you interested key number one is for the body of christ to come into a sense of love and unity we will need the practice we will need to introduce the practice of mutual honor as a value system it is impossible to attain unity in an atmosphere of dishonor or when honor is not mutual for a long time the trend in the body of christ has been individualism and this sense of bitterness sarcasm hatred over one ministry one pastor one we we have to grow and mature beyond this point this is what the holy spirit was sent to do in our lives and to do in his body the practice of mutual honor as a value system don't go around insulting men of god insulting churches contrasting people causing trouble for men of god comparing this one is more anointed than this this one is more blessed you there will always be trouble when there is no sense of mutual honor are we together yes everyone who is called by god in ministry in business we just finished a series on witnesses everyone has a call and within the limit of their call election and assignment they are deserving of honor politicians deserve their honor for the sacrifice of formulating policies and leading the nation business people deserve their honor for helping to bring development across a territory and to supply financial resources men and women of god spiritual leaders generally speaking they are deserving um, of honor for connecting a territory to faith and helping to shape the spiritual convictions of people within a territory career people are contributors to nation building contributors to destiny until we come to a point where we are unashamed about acknowledging the contribution of one another and to lavishly and honestly and truthfully communicate honor there cannot be unity in the body of christ by the time i come and stand here and attempt to outshine every man of god here we have great ministers of the gospel scattered here in the overflows many following online imagine that i downplay them i downplay their relevance i rubbish what they are doing and make it look as though they are not serious with god i am the one let me tell you how you know you are in error the moment it looks like you are the only one who is right is a sign that you are under attack do not fall into the attack of elijah elijah said i am the only one and god said nonsense there are seven thousand others who have not bowed are we together we must have that greater sense of cohesion you are a music minister don't come and laugh at another music minister oh this one is this this one is that we must obtain grace and maturity both spiritual and psychological to grow past this realm of childishness there is need to practice mutual honor i look forward to times when men of god can sincerely appreciate themselves can i tell you this it is it is not news that the body of christ has different dimensions of problems and troubles it is solving from excesses here and there to doctrinal issues to personality issues of men of god these things are not new are we together now none of them is a reason enough 
to bring hatred, jealousy, backbiting. Most of this hatred and jealousy in the body of Christ, it didn't come because of ministry. It came because of a background of deprivation, a background where we seem to not have made it. And so we look forward to platforms to vent those things out. And then we mix them and make it look like it's the Holy Spirit making us act that way. No, the Holy Spirit is never to be blamed for those attributes of the flesh. It is the dimension of us that has not yielded to his renewal that is tampering with the anointing he gave us and is producing a mix of results. We must learn to honor one another. Can I tell you this? We must honor the fathers of faith. You don't honor a father because he's flawless or perfect. You honor a father because that position warrants your honor forever. We have to be careful. Some of these mistakes we keep making around and just because nothing seems to be an obvious consequence, we think there is no consequence. Every father of faith within this nation is deserving of honor. And then we must honor our contemporaries listen i must admit something and we must all admit it also the truth is that we are equal in christ but we are not equal in results we are not equal in grace it is an uncomfortable truth that we must admit the election of grace alongside the sacrifice of alignment has separated us into cadres of possibilities we cannot downplay that however we must look past those things look past crowd look past revelational prowess look past prophetic power look forth look past the grace for miracle signs and wonders and be able to meet someone and shake the person even if it is 10 members that he has how are you sir how is the work you are doing and usually you say ah you are the ones doing the work you have all the crowd there be wise enough to say no we are co-laborers provided there is one soul that you are a pastor over it is worth to God that one soul is still worth the blood of Jesus. You see, when you maintain that disposition, the likelihood that that person will criticize you and be jealous and be envious is no longer there because you have let that person know that you equally appreciate what they are doing. We must honor the fathers. We must honor our contemporaries in ministry. And we must also honor our sons, our daughters, and our mentees. If you honor the fathers alone and disregard your contemporaries and your mentees, you are a hypocrite. The Bible says, honor all men. Can I tell you this? We are sons and thank God for the privilege of raising other sons and mentees. But when you fight sons and fight mentees and don't appreciate what they are doing, whether with you or not god will help them grow when they grow without your contribution do not expect loyalty from them let me tell you this fatherhood demands that you are patient with sons they will make mistakes they will do stupid things that's what it means the the condition to be a father is that you must be ready to take a lot of nonsense from sons that's what makes you a father Don't discourage younger ministers coming. They will, you will see pride, you will see flesh, you will see carelessness. Your assignment as a father is to be able to call them rebuke, correct, but show love. Let them know that you believe in what they are doing. We have, we have this attitude of using our progress to bully people who are coming up in ministry. When a young man says, I'm getting into ministry, we who God has helped a bit, usually we come with this sense of sarcasm. What do you know? What are you doing? They will make mistakes. They should learn. It's better for your sons and daughters to make mistakes in your lifetime as a father, where you can correct and build them and be sure of the product you are releasing to the world. This is not a, a, a license for licentiousness. Sons and daughters should also behave well because if you are learning, you should be growing. Are we together? We must be patient. Honor the fathers. Honor our contemporaries and co-laborers. We must also honor the ones who God is helping to come up. The little children. You watch the video of my dear children here, Azaria children who were singing. Those little children are the prophets, the apostles of tomorrow. 
many many parents both spiritual and natural are being punished today because of their insensitivity to reach down to another generation and help them if you were not there when i was in the cave of adulam don't expect an invitation when i'm sitting on the table of greatness we must be there for people and grow with them not just show up in their success and want a stake in their lives this is a message to the body of christ there is no tell them it's a message to everybody let's honor the fathers my fear listen I, i'm speaking by the privilege of the apostolic grace my fear now again is the kind of sons and mentees that we are raising we have to be very careful and be sure that we are raising people who love the lord the level of pride the level of of self-centeredness carnality that is rising every young man right now just because you can preach or prophesy you can insult anybody it ought not to be so we must restore honor to the body we are not stupid people christianity is not a blind religion just because we're in christ does not mean our common sense was taken away even our natural heritage teaches us that respect and honor pays are we together now that is the first key that will produce unity the ability to salute people you are a man of god don't sit down and gather sons and daughters and be talking about men of god all over castigating people no let me tell you this one of the ethics of fatherhood is that you must gauge the spiritual level of the people who are within your mentorship there are certain discussions and there are certain information that you should not expose younger believers to these are discussions of fathers you now bring people who are just starting the faith and you discourage them or you plant pride in them and then sons and daughters you have a responsibility to protect and uphold your fathers don't join the head of men of god and cause trouble for people around oh man of god i went somewhere they spoke about you oh man of god they, this is the trouble that most people bring upon the body of christ we are god's bride and we must you be united and appreciate ourselves like i was saying i look forward to times when a man of god will be organizing a crusade or a program and another man of god will write off a check for buses or sound and say i do not know you i just know that what you are doing is going to glorify the name of the lord here is my contribution noiseless contribution genuinely not the type you close the door and say don't mind them no when someone comes around you to gossip and talk about men of god rebuke him then tell him let's pray let's be careful it is a word of warning because there are spiritual consequences listen this house as a principle we are people of honor you will never hear me open open up stand here and mention the name of any man of god and castigate and criticize that is not the ministry we are giving we are giving the ministry to preach christ yes we will challenge wrong doctrines yes we have our value system as individuals and as a ministry but let me tell you this you want to see the backing of god in your life I'm teaching you the secret you must not only love God you must love the body people will make mistakes people will teach there will be error in doctrine God has granted us grace across different divides and for us who God has helped a bit with either influence or revelatory graces or prophetic power or grace for signs and wonders or leadership we must administer such in the spirit of humility I go to places and when people see me even great people oh apostle god bless you i don't stand and brag my chest and say now you know i'm happy you are recognizing no why did you go through the school of the spirit then you must reciprocate listen when a great man celebrates you understand it is not easy it's not easy for people to stake their reputation and appreciate you and so if and when they do receive it with thanksgiving but have the intelligence to reciprocate are we learning 
so this is the first key to the unity of the body the second key that i'm proposing and i said that in my broadcast that can help the body to be united is to understand the jurisdictional component of authority authority without jurisdiction is dangerous yes we must love the body of christ and we must have that ability to understand the jurisdictional component if one of our little ones here is running around you can hold that one and bring the person because it's within your jurisdiction but you cannot go to the road and just open a door and start flogging an, another person's child and you say you are a disciplinarian it's not done that way it's not your jurisdiction are we are we following now do you know what killed john the baptist in the bible bible students do you know the bible called him the greatest prophet he was the greatest when he stayed within his jurisdiction he had finished his assignment by announcing christ he would have stayed with honor but he went into the issue of talking about herodias why did you marry the wife of this and that and for that mistake even though he was a prophet they jailed him and his head went for it the way he died i don't believe that's how god would want to honor someone that way there is a jurisdictional component to authority are we together the body of christ will never experience unity when there is no jurisdiction ah this man had a crusade or this man had a seminar oh he didn't do it correctly mm -mm, mm -mm. that is not your assignment if you observe anything that was not done well go to god in prayer the prayer altar is there pray for them are we blessed number three the third key that can promote unity in the body of christ is outright forbearance there are certain levels of transformation that may never honestly happen pragmatically speaking you will just need forbearance I think I've taught it here the difference between forgiveness and forbearance forgiveness means that it's a pardon for something transgression trespass forbearance means create a system of accommodation because whatever you have seen will happen again and again and again for instance there are men of God who are different there are some of us who are on the arrogant side there are some of us who are on the extroverted side there are some who are very reserved and into themselves are we together now forbearance angry Elijah temperous Moses stammerer Moses are we together slow and annoying Samuel all of them were used by God I hope you know it was Samuel's delay that made Saul to lose his throne are we together yes all those people proud and self-centered Elijah I'm the only one and God said keep quiet yet all of them were used by God and this Bible is very intentional about preserving their exploits and when we get to Hebrews 11 the Bible calls all of them elders for by it it says the elders obtained a good report praise the name of the lord we need forbearance if your pastor is an angry person pray 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 but while you pray just create forbearance forbearance means expect it and build joy above it don't expect him to change to be happy that is that is not a wise approach and this applies not only to men of God, husbands, wives, and all of that. I think I made a statement on, on Friday. One time I was counseling a couple and the man apologized to the woman for something he had done wrong. And he said, I promise it will never happen. I just told him, I said, Mr. Man, just stop there. I assure you <laughs> to say it will not happen. No, madam, your own assignment build a system of joy from scripture let his transformation be an added advantage to your joy not the basis for it are we blessed 
you need to forbear the bible tells us it mandates that we forbear so that you don't get up for instance and go to a church and you find people dancing and jumping and say what rubbish is going on here mm -mm. forbear jesus is still there just search for him you can go somewhere else and it looks like nothing is going on there forbear a man of god may be teaching you are used to a man of god being careful and quiet and very calculated you go somewhere and the person is jumping up and down forbear don't just conclude because it's it's not an experience that is similar with the pattern you are used to just because it's a pattern you are not used to does not mean it's not of god we need forbearance <laughs> hallelujah personally you would have noticed that i'm somebody who likes taking unnecessary things out of the way straight to the point opening prayer worship once you are done open fire next program there's no drama and mm -mm. but i mean you you can't go somewhere and they're acting drama and say they are wasting time no somebody is getting blessed from that drama if it's not blessing you it's because god that's why drama is not the only thing done in the church there is opening prayer if that one does not bless you be patient for worship if worship does not bless you let testimonies bless you if everything does not bless you an altar call is what you need listen i'm not being sarcastic this this is this is a miracle service we're going to leave the issue of sickness and the rest we're coming there but this is a message for the body of christ can i tell you this with all humility by the grace of god there is no there is no major denomination as it were that i have not preached in within this nation adapt adaptation is proof of honor you must be able to adapt if you go to a place and they are singing hymns find a hymn book look at the wordings now that you are a christian the wordings will even mean more to you we sang powerful hymns and didn't know what we we're saying i remember those days in the seminary they would ask us to repeat stanza one three five after we are we've sang six stanzas yeah come on please why stanza one three maybe verse and finish but now you read the same hymns and you cry and say such power captured in it when you search for jesus in his body you will find him in the midst of the lampstands an imperfect lampstand i saw one in the midst of a lampstand jesus himself praise the name of the lord provided we want to walk in unity listen to me we must obtain grace from god to forbear we must obtain grace from god to forbear everybody you see both preachers and members and business people and politicians they are in a state of transformation there is nobody who has graduated from the school of the spirit the school of the spirit is a school that you never graduate while god is using you you are still going through that training we must have a strong sense of forbearance the principles of global leadership demand that you must have a, a strong sense of flexibility you are dealing with people from different cultures different experiences it doesn't forbear does not mean just to allow anything happen no there has to be flexibility are we blessed so the keys to unity mutual honor and then number two understanding jurisdiction as we administer authority and then number three forbearance 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 and then i rounded up that broadcast by expressing my gratitude and i'm doing it again thank you thank you some of you now you are forbearing me isn't it because you are you, you came ready for power and shouting i'm tired of these demons tired of them apostle get these spirits out of me just be patient i've taught you forbearance <laughs> hallelujah praise the name of the lord i pray that in our lifetime we will be able to see a greater sense of cohesion in the body 
I pray that in our lifetime, we'll be able to look past our differences and be able to focus on Jesus and obtain grace to drive this body to her desired heaven to be greater reflections of the reality of the life, the love, and the power of Jesus. Are we in agreement? Lord, make us instruments of your peace where there is hatred let your love be Lord make us instruments of your peace once the pride of prejudice shall When we are your instruments of peace. Father, this is our prayer. Help us as men of God, politicians, and members of the government, career people, family people, all together, build your body indeed. And may we be more perfect reflections of your intention for us. And I pray that as your people glean from these truths that I have shared, may it be a contribution towards kingdom come. And yet the more, let it be a contribution towards the unity of the body. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Are you ready for tonight? Daniel chapter 6. Daniel chapter 6 from verse 24. Just one scripture and then we'll begin to pray. Please hold on with Daniel chapter 6. Please give me Joshua chapter 3 and verse 7. The Lord always gives me a word every time during my birthday and the word is not only for me I believe that the word is for everyone connected to this grace so I just thought to read the scripture this is the word the Lord gave me and the Lord said unto Joshua this day I will begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel that they may know that as I was with Moses so I will be with you therefore I speak to you in the name of Jesus Christ by extension from today may the Lord begin to magnify you please believe it receive it may the Lord begin to magnify you in the name of Jesus the Christ of God I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit in your field of endeavor in your going out in your coming in the Lord will magnify you in the name of Jesus chapter 4 Lord magnified Joshua in the sight of all Israel and they feared him as they feared Moses all the days of his life I pray for you the result you will begin to command from today by the power of the Holy Ghost I decree and declare in the name of Jesus may your result make people to fear your God financial results spiritual results intellectual results may that grace come upon you in the name of jesus christ results in ministry results in politics results in family results in your finances in the name of jesus christ the lord will make you 10 times greater 10 times greater in the name of jesus christ please be seated god bless you Daniel chapter 6 I sense that there is a strong anointing tonight from verse 24 the Lord is going to be bringing a massive deliverance in this place let me tell you what deliverance is deliverance is a spiritual system by which the saints are separated listen carefully are separated from the obstacles 
it doesn't always have to be spirits there can be mountains that stand before you the separation between you and any source of impedance whatever it is that sustains the ability to impede your progress in life and in destiny that art of separation is called deliverance are we together daniel chapter 6 please give it to us verse 24 this was these were the three hebrew boys now cast into fire and the king darius now commanded and they brought those men which had accused daniel and they cast them into the den of lions and their children and their wives okay this was the, the story of daniel now in the lions den. and the lions had mastery of them you discern what that means and break their bones in pieces or ever they came at the at the at the bottom of the den uh -huh, next verse and the king wrote to all people nations languages that dwell in all the earth a decree is about to be passed peace be multiplied unto you it says i make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom men tremble and fear before the god of daniel why for he is a living god and steadfast forever and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed and his dominion shall be even unto the end 27 this is why he is called that god only savior he is deliverer he can bring you and pull you out of trouble that people have looked at your life and your family can anything good come out of these people can anything good come out of this one that one and god says i am a deliverer i can come and snatch you from from the jaws of the lion listen i truly believe in the power of god to deliver there is a relationship between a separation between you and your obstacles and your prosperity he says i desire to come to you again even i paul once and again but satan hindered us favor desiring to come to you lifting desiring to come to you satan can hinder things hallelujah there are people here under the sound of my voice and following from across the globe the truth is that based on the gifting that god has put in your life the nation should be celebrating you you should not be at this level but there are powers that sit upon men's destinies please give me zechariah chapter 1 and verse 18 we're about to pray zechariah 1 18 please pay attention connect those outside the overflows following online zechariah 1 and verse 18 then lifted i up my eyes and saw and behold what did i see four horns a horn is a symbol of authority verse 19 he says and i said unto the angel that talked with me what be these and he answered me these are the horns that have scattered judah my praise scattered israel my covenant scattered jerusalem my peace there are horns that fight your praise there are horns that fight your promise there are horns that fight your peace but the bible says and the lord of peace himself shall give you peace always by all means next verse still on zechariah chapter 1 and verse 20 and the lord showed me four carpenters aha uh -huh. it's never too late for a carpenter never too late for a carpenter you can change the wood you can redesign everything he says what come this to do he's still talking about the horns and he spake saying these are the horns which have scattered judah read with me so that no man did lift up his head oh it can peg your father he is unable to rise even though he went to school even though he went to u.s this 
power sit on people's destinies listen let me teach you something about scripture there is what people like ew kenyon will call the legal side of redemption and the vital side of redemption here's how i put it the prophetic dimension of the speakings of god versus their experiential manifestation in god's mind everything is finished including the death of jesus before it happened because he appropriated in the life of believers in god's mind no believer should be poor are there poor believers in god's mind no believer should be sick are there sick believers what makes you think there are no oppressed believers the oppression does not negate the finished work of christ it as powerful as god is and jesus is he did not cast sin out of man he didn't say the cross the grave and trust what defeated sin so to merely sit down and just assume that everything is all right is the same mistake as someone who hears the gospel and just believes that just because jesus died he's automatically saved he's not automatically saved the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus is a reality yet till today there are people going to hell what is their offense their offense is that they have not believed and appropriated that truth into their lives it is so for salvation it is so god of miracles has won my battles for me i'm a winner man i'm a winner man he has won my battles for me i'm a winner man i'm a winner man he has won my battles for me can i tell you something listen to me for many years in my life even as a man of god demon spirits were oppressing me not many people would tell you this truth I'm not saying it to discourage you and I'm not demeaning the power of Jesus we stand today by that same power and because of my prophetic inclination I would see spirits literally enter my room I shouted Jesus in Jesus name in Jesus name nothing happened because the name is not a charm it works by understanding Did the sons of Skiva not mention the same name? Did the demons go? What did they do to the man? They even said, Jesus I know. Paul I know. I see their understanding supporting what they are doing. Where is your own understanding? There are many believers under all kinds of oppression, stagnated and not manifesting to their fullness of their destinies in Christ. Why? Because they just assume that everything is gone why then do you go to the hospital why do you visit the pharmacy for drugs even though you believe eternal life is at work in you if someone is sick now and you pray in the name of Jesus and nothing seems to happen you can honorably take the person to a pharmacy to midwife his health while he's learning the laws of divine health is that true it does not mean you don't believe in divine health but hospital and drugs are God's systems of mercy to midwife our longevity and our health while we are learning God himself knows that it's a process I'm a winner man a winner man yes one my for me listen let me tell you the day my deliverance came i found a scripture and light came like an arrow from heaven and entered me when that light entered me i ran i stood in front of my room then and i shouted i pleaded with the spirits that used to oppress me i begged them to return till tomorrow they have not returned listen when we minister like this number one we are not being boastful number two we are not negating what christ has done the administration of his power is our participatory role in actualizing his finished work in and to our lives this is what the bible calls faith the name of the action you take based on your conviction on who god is and the integrity of his person it is always by grace but it is through faith grace is the name given to everything that is in god released to man 
only through the office of the Christ. That's what we call grace. Mercy is grace. Power is grace. Wisdom is grace. Grace is not unmerited favor. That's just one dimension of it. Grace is a generic name given to the storehouse that contains everything that makes God God. It's called grace. But the system of access and delivery is what we must learn. Help that person, please. Help that lady under the anointing. Believers, we must trust God to mature in doctrine so that we do not become victims. Help her. There is a mighty deliverance that is happening to her there. Because the Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. So understand, there are many spirits, but this one is that spirit, the Lord. The Lord is that spirit. And where the Lord is, you know he signs that signature by giving men liberty. So that a door that has been closed for 90 years, your grandfather tried to open till he died there. Your father tried to open till he... Oh, it, we are not going to open it. We will break it into pieces so that your children too can pass. Do you know why Nathaniel said to Jesus, can anything good come out of Nazareth? He was not lying. There was an antecedent. There, there was a track record. There are regions where men only rise by eating from others. They never become established. No matter how educated. There are regions where it's the women that feed the men. The husband is the wife and the wife is the husband. Hard working, diligent people. How about people where doors are open for you? Just when you are seeing it to pick it. Who's seen that this man was born blind? That means there was something Jesus taught them. Immediately they saw this. A good student said, Jesus, you've taught us something. But who's seen? Was it this man or his father? He said, neither. But that the glory of the Lord be revealed. Can I tell you this? This night I want you to be angry and make up your mind. We have a few minutes tonight. We are going to trust God to have a convocation within this place. To walk from person to person and bring to end everything that will not bow to the name of the Lord. Listen. Can I tell you this? I remember many years ago. This was in Zaria. We are about to pray. A precious man of God came to meet me and as soon as he entered my room I saw a spirit behind him I was just watching and he was telling me some of the ordeals around his life and ministry sincere well-meaning godly person I kept quiet and then I told him I said sir can I pray for you I think there is an oppression ah he shot me down immediately no 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 don't talk to me about oppression I said okay I'm sorry I hope I don't offend you but if you will allow me pray for ah, I just want you to agree with me I said no problem let's do the agreement when I held his hand he only got up after how many minutes the kind of deliverance that happened to him see it did not take one week it's like the doors were just opening like this do you know that guy returned back and said apostle what happened upon Mount Zion listen where does the deliverance happen where does the deliverance happen? Go to the book of Hebrews. What is in Mount Zion? The church of the firstborn. Innumerable company of angels. That's why deliverance happens. Zion is the appropriate way for, place for deliverance to happen. If it does not happen upon Mount Zion, where else does it happen? There shall be deliverance and then holiness. Then the sons of Jacob shall possess it will never enter your hand till the resistance have been cleared away i can tell you this hear me there are men of god do you know even over this city there are controlling powers when god sent me to this city i took out quality time signing that spiritual register Manta predicate here. Let me tell you this. Help them. I tell you the truth and forgive me if it sounds like I'm just bragging. You can be in a city, yet spiritually you are outside that city because the gate is still closed over you. You do business in that city, you will lose 
you do whatever in that city you will lose because the two leaf gates have not been parted are you ready to pray i once prayed for a woman who had a school and all of a sudden mysteriously wonderful woman people started picking their children away from the school what did she do it was not that okay they got some new teachers and i called her i said madam continue your pathway of principles and excellence but let's deal with this there are spiritual things to be dealt with i prayed for that woman i anointed her the biblical pathway not some of these superstitious things that people do there is an angle to deliverance that is not consistent with doctrine it may not mean that the, those who are administering it are bad they are just inaccurate as far as the administration of the power of god is concerned there is a way we administer the power of god that is consistent with doctrine she went back and fire breakthroughs everywhere let me tell you this if there is anything i know that produces instant results is true deliverance when the impedance leaves your life you will be surprised some of you can be seated here while in church and a call just comes this was the call you've been waiting for for five years you don't know that there are spirits in the airways that shut the ears and the attention of destiny help us do you believe what i'm sharing with you because from here now we're going to pray and i'll begin to minister i'm going to take quality time to minister deliverance this night and then we're going to pray for the sick we'll speak over your prayer request this is the sixth month the sixth month there has to be an evidence someone promised to help you and lift you and like the wine presser the moment they get out of prison they forget you and their forgetfulness adds two years to your pain i don't know about you if you are all right your children are all right you are already enjoying everything pray for us but as for me and my house make up your mind that father there must be an evidence of your favor your grace but before then hear me there are families that are connected i know what i'm seeing as i'm speaking here so i want your heart to be open as we pray no distraction focus on jesus and let's deal with some of these issues hallelujah one prayer point and then i'll begin to minister by the spirit please let your heart be open please rise up on your feet please rise up on your feet and we're going to pray you're going to decree and declare that on account of the finished work of christ everything connected to ancestry connected to bloodlines foundations by the power that raised christ from the dead he must let you go now lift your voice and begin to pray are you praying please pray blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against us he nailed it to his cross lift your voice and pray are you praying? Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we declare victory. It's time for everything that is not the planting of God to be with.
Everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me. Say, everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me. Everything that was lost shall be restored unto me. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, please listen to me. We have a few minutes and we are going to be very, very fast. But I want you to open up your heart and let the power of God bring you deliverance tonight. We're going to pray for the sick and we're going to celebrate the walking power of Jesus Christ in this place. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm ready to pray. I see a wind blowing over this place. Listen. The Lord wants to rebuke the spirit of delay. I want you to bring them out. These are the first sets of people we are going to pray over. At the count of three, I want you to shout, Jesus, Father, you have brought us here by your spirit. Please bring them out. In the name that is above all names, everyone who is under the yoke and the influence of delay, I come by the rod of a higher priesthood. In the name of Jesus, that yoke and that spirit be broken. At the count of three, you will shout, Jesus, one, two, Three, I command that devil out of their lives now. Release their destinies now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Bring them out. By the power that's in the name of Jesus Christ. The spirit of delay over individuals, over family. I come against you now. By the power of the Holy Ghost, I come against you now. By the power of the Holy Ghost, bring them out. The Lord is opening my eyes, and I'm seeing chains, chains around the feet of people. It's held people for years. You are trying to move, and it looks like something is bringing you down. Right now, fire is coming from heaven. That every chain, in the name of Jesus, chains be broken now. Be broken now. Be broken now. Be broken now. All the overflow outside, following online, chains be broken in the name of Jesus. We are still praying. Who is Deborah? I'm hearing the name Deborah. They call you Deborah. Deborah, Deborah, Deborah. There's someone with that name. Just very quickly, I want to speak to you. Deborah. You have a name, Deborah. Who is that person? Let me pray for you. Haya haya ha ye Aquaibom. Who is from Aquaibom? Debra. You are from Aquaibom. Come, I want to pray for you. Please don't come out at random. Don't worry, we are praying. That every planting that is not of God. 
Can I pray for you? The Lord is bringing deliverance. There is someone, the Lord is opening my eyes. You are holding three photos on your hand, pictures. Three. Three. One, two, three. Please come. Please come. Three photos. You are holding them on your hand. Whether you are here or any of the overflows, if you can find that person while I pray for these people, please don't come out at random. Please. There is a lot we are going to do. In the name that is above all names, I pray for you. Please stand up. I decree and I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that everything that is not a planting of God, I curse it now. Now, let it live your life. In the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the living God. Now, for all of you who have come out here, may not have the time to speak to everybody. One of you, the power of God is coming on you now with a loud shout. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands towards you. Everything that is not a planting of God may fire from heaven. Rest upon it now. Rest upon it now. Rest upon it now. Rest upon it now. In the name of Jesus, be delivered right now. Be delivered right now. In the name of Jesus, for all of you who are standing, I stretch my hands and I declare the plague of sickness, sickness, recurrent sickness, recurrent sickness. This is what I'm saying recurrent sickness coming again. You treat it, coming again. You treat it. I speak and I come by the rod of a higher priesthood. I command that devil out of your life now, out of your destiny. In the name of Jesus. Let there be a miracle right now in the name of Jesus Christ. That lady, I cast that devil out of her now in the name of Jesus Christ. Those of you who are standing, please return back to your seats rejoicing. Where is I don't know if you've gotten the woman, I'm seeing in my vision a fair woman. You are holding three photos. Is there someone like that here? I'm a winner man. I'm a winner man. I'm a winner man. I'm a winner man. Madam, stretch your hands. Lift. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Out of her now. In the name of Jesus, never returns to you. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, let there be liberty for you. Who is James? James. James. I'm hearing a name, James. What is the name of your husband? Give her the mic. Come, stand here. I'm a winner, man. A winner, man. Where is he, my dear? He's in outside. He's outside. He's uh, outside with me. But I want to pray. A miracle is coming for your family. I'm telling you, God is about to turn things around. There is a James outside. You are wearing a white like a kaftan. White. White and white. I want to speak to that person. Is there someone like... Not, not just this one. This not... Is there someone like that? You are not in this auditorium. What's your name, sir? Come and stand here. What do you do? Huh? I said you are wearing white and white. I'm looking at you. And I'm seeing you sitting down on a sewing machine. What do you do? I'm a tailoring, sir. Please don't come out at random. Let's, let's fear God. There's, there's order in the house of God. Please, if we don't call your case and you come, we'll politely drive you back to your seat. Please, there is order in the house of God. Praise the name of the Lord. You believe in the power of the Holy Spirit? I want to pray for you. Madam, I know your husband is following. Don't worry, husband. You don't have to come. Just stand in faith. I pray for you. Please look at me. The month of August is a strange month of breakthrough for your family. I stretch my hands and in the name of Jesus, I declare it so. 
by the power of the holy spirit there are two people at the back the power of god is coming on them with a loud shout please pick them and bring them out two people at the back i just saw light leaving this place right to the back please bring them my dear i curse everything connected to witchcraft and ancestry what do you do huh I'm an Are you a businessman? Yes, sir. What, yes, do you, sir. what do you do? I was actually doing Uber, but I'm, I'm into rice supply right now. I want to pray for you. Will you believe if I tell you by the end of this year, you'll be a multi-millionaire? Amen! You believe it? Listen, when, when we prophesy, this is not the marketing of flesh. We are kingdom-driven people, and everything we do is for his glory. My brother, there is an anointing that lifts. There is a grace that blesses. Stand up, come. The Lord is asking me to pray for you. I'm not saying you should come up. Just stand here. I want to pray for you. Where is your mother? She's in the village, sir. Do you know why God is raising you? No, sir. Because your mother loves God and she has been praying. And God is going to use you as a consolation, particularly for the prayer of your mother. I stretch my hands. The grace that makes for favor. Take that grace now. Take that grace. In the name of Jesus, go and prosper. You will never be the same. In the name of Jesus, you will command favor in strange ways by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. For all of you who are out here, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I decree and declare, we are still praying. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Let there be healing for you now. Healing for you now. I'm seeing a strange vision. Please bring them out now. I'm just seeing snakes all over this place. This is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing snakes. I stand by the God of heaven. And everything that represents an orchestration of darkness. Not just in front. Even across the congregation. I stretch my hands. Let there be liberty from any spirit that is not of God. Any fraternity with spirit beings. Please bring them out. I curse those spirits right now. I curse those spirits right now. I curse those spirits right now. I curse those tabakatabakatoks. Emprakatakatokatabrakataba. I curse those spirits right now. Hallelujah. Who is Jane? Jane. Like J A N E. I'm hearing a name Jane. We may not have all the time to speak to people one on one. Jane, is there someone like that? Who is Gift? Gift. G I F T. Is there someone like that? Gift. Let hope, let it rise. Darkness trembles in your own delight. Yeah. Let hope, let it rise. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. The Lord is showing me someone, your mother. Your mother is in the hospital right now. I'm seeing this is sickness. Is she's been so I don't know what it is, but I don't know if she's paralyzed. She's in the hospital, lying down in sick bed. Who is that person? Please don't come out at random, please. My my dear, look at me. What's your name? Huh? What's your name? Don't cry, don't cry. Don't cry. Madam, what's your name? Okay, I want to pray for you. Father, I stretch my hands over these ones. My God, I'm just seeing fire leaving my hand. I'm just coming to rest on some of you. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands by the power that raised Christ from the dead. Let there be liberty right now. Liberty right now. Liberty right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
liberty right now i cross the workings of darkness this is koinonia the house of god i declare liberty right now by the power that raised christ from the dead in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus help them please hallelujah ah wow this is serious um please don't be embarrassed you don't have to come out i'm seeing a woman you have been pregnant this is way past nine months it's like this pregnancy is just continuous but you will not give birth who is that person this is a very strange situation god is showing me every sign of pregnancy but it's like indefinite pregnancy you understand what i'm saying is there someone like that in the name of jesus please pray hallelujah 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 why is she here why are you here you are pregnant there's no pregnancy there now pregnant physically not spiritually preg physically pregnant more than nine months how many years how many years one year five months come and stand here how many years one year nine months how many years give her the mic this one i'm seeing one year nine months written on her stand up this is demonic how can a human hold on please madam it's all right it's all right how can a person hold pregnancy for one year nine months i'm a winner man a winner man he has won my battle for me i'm a winner man I'm a winner man I'm a winner man A winner man My dear Hold on Look at me, look at me Let's save time man, stand up Let me just minister to you Please be patient this night and let God give us a visitation. You are married? This is my third pregnancy. I saw you in my dream. Hold on, madam. Don't worry. It's all right. You are, that, um, God has answered your prayer. We are going to pray. Huh? Look at this. Look at me. I curse that spirit. According to God's design for us, there are doctors here. Women. Is it not nine months? Is elephants that carry children for over two years or so not human beings this is witchcraft everything you have been carrying spiritually that you should give birth to business ideas visions every power stopping your delivery I command it to clear the way now clear the way now have the fleet Clear the way now! Clear the way now! Shkata baratos koto prete! Clear the way now! Clear the way now! As soon as Zion travails, the Bible says, she shall put forth a son. Madam, let this woman stand up. Let me pray for her. Help her. Just help her. Madam, you're married? I lost my husband for my, uh, last year. He was poisoned. And since then, I've been carrying pregnancy for the past one year, nine months. Even if I go to the hospital, it's not my first pregnancy. Look at this. You are seeing a pregnant woman. This is a pregnant. And you go to the hospital. He said they did not see anything. Stretch your hands. Pray for this woman like you are praying for your blood. Satan, take 
Take your hand from this woman. In the name of Jesus, we command every demonic hindrance. Give way now. You have taken all the pain. You have taken all the shame. You have taken all disappointments. You have taken all the worries. You have made them yours. You have taken all my pain. You have taken all my shame. You have taken all my sorrow. You have taken all the weakness. You have made them listen if this is a genuine pregnancy then we declare according to the time of life may you go and give birth to healthy children that you will come and stand before God's people and testify you are her sister or dot who is this your sister oh dear don't cry weep not for the book is open the lion of the tribe of judah has prevailed madam i stretch my hands and i pray for you now in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god let there be a miracle for you right now my sister in the name of jesus christ according to the time of life go and give birth in jesus name for all of you who are out i don't know why you are out but i declare by the spirit of the living god every issue of concern it comes under judgment now i'm hearing a name asabe a s a b e it's like that's somebody's name is there someone like that i want to pray who is that who has ah. we give you worship worship the highest praise to the king you're welcome madam can i pray for you i want to pray for you my goodness the lord is bringing a miracle we're going to pray for the sick shortly but i'm seeing the power of god touching you your body in the name of jesus christ i stretch my hands and i decree and declare by the power that raised christ from the dead everything that is not a planting of god roaming around your body we command an exodus of it out of your body now in the name of jesus number two madam the lord is saying i should prophesy to you the month of july call it your month of restoration the lord is restoring many things to your life restoring many things to your life i declare it so in the name of jesus christ there is someone here we are going to pray but i'm seeing someone your father is a military officer the lord is asking me to pray for the person right now a military officer i want to pray and rebuke the spirit of death people are following on air no telling lies no telling lies we are praying for everybody if your father biological father is not a military officer please stay back make sure that you don't just come out at random we're praying now praise the name of the lord you just come and stand quickly and let's pray please don't be tired god is visiting people ah i just saw light there is a grace for speed people are going to begin to run right now just hold them and bring them out. I release that grace for speed. Bring them out. There is a strength grace for speed that is coming on people now. Politicians, businessmen, men and women of God, take that grace now. Take that grace now. Take that anointing now. Please bring them out. Strength grace for speed that is coming upon you. Some of you in the next one month, within one month, within one month, things will begin to shift in your life we are prophesied by the spirit within one month 
within one month the delay of years within one month speed speed to your life help them please speed to your life i'm still praying it i'm still seeing that grace rest on people you will marvel and wonder at what begins to happen in your life supernatural speech hallelujah there is a man of god here oh dear you have been praying don't come out the power of god will come on you you have been desiring a strange grace for signs and wonders and the prophetic you are on this road this road the power of god will touch other people but the person i'm talking about is on this road this road at the back bring the person there is a grace for signs and wonders as is happening to one as many as desire in the name of jesus may that mantle rest upon your ministry upon your life grace is coming upon you signs wonders i'm telling you you will be surprised at what god will do in your life grace you will command signs and wonders in business in ministry may the good hand of god come upon you hallelujah any military officer here that the spirit of death is looking for their family i stand by the god of heaven in the name of jesus christ anyone's father who is a military officer in the name of jesus you will not die in battle i declare supernatural preservation by the power of the holy spirit preserved by the good hand of god in the name of jesus christ preserved by the hand of god in the name of jesus christ your brother has been missing for two years not has been missing two years two years who is that that's your number one prayer request come and stand here stand up please my dear just minimize crying when you come so that we attend to you god has located you praise the name of the lord please don't cry look at me my dear your brother what's his name <laughs> how many years 35 35 huh. how many years has he been missing two years how about you what's the name of your brother nandom he's been missing yes sir and my sister fejiro he has been missing for two years what's his name fejiro listen what does he do he just graduated so what was he doing he was just doing some jobs all of a sudden just went away I'm listening. well on well, live tv there are some things that is wise to just keep quiet but you see we have to pray for our relatives because sometimes this deception that people bring let's help you get to this country you will get a job you understand what i'm saying and this is what is happening to him but in the name of jesus the spirit that is making him misbehave he's still alive come back home now can i tell you this there is no country that has an advantage by default if the lord does not go with you every nation has a bridge and there are people living under it so just because it's us or uk or asia does not mean automatically now i know that many of them have leadership structures that easily allow people to prosper but i'm telling you except god holds a man's hand and helps you in this life you can travel all you can and return back to your yesterday my sister where are you from i want to pray for you this prayer is not just for your brother let me start with you first huh? 
shame and reproach in the name of Jesus I command it to leave you the spirit that is part of shame and reproach release her now in the name of Jesus Christ my friend what do you do I'm a real estate agent sir you are a real estate agent yes sir do your real estate yes sir. but start preparing for ministry hmm? look at me the call of God was upon your life before real estate you know that right God showed you in dreams that yes, you will sir. do evangelism yes, you've sir. seen yourself go to your village yes sir. you are from my place now yes sir yes, prepare sir. God yes, is sir. calling you do your real estate but then at the same time don't run away from the call of God the call of God is not a cause many of us run away because we think you will not eat so we run away as though God just calls people to rubbish their life he calls us into a life of honor are we together now my friend don't cry I pray that God will help you in your real estate but I also pray that you will answer the call and that God will equip you and he will use you mightily for all our loved ones who are missing be found in Jesus name hallelujah this will be the first time I will be making any public statement about a territory and about this territory since God brought us here I'm not one person who comes out and says you know prophecies and all of that no I love the Lord whatever we see we pray but listen I'm saying it openly pray for Abuja I will just leave it there we must pray that God will frustrate the counsel of darkness in the name of Jesus Christ that the sound of mourning and the sound of death by the appearance of evil men that God will stay we must fortify the spiritual borders of this territory through prayer and intercession and declare that God will expose and destroy everything that does not constitute the counsel of God are we together now don't say what I did not say pray but you see God has granted us grace and he has put a burden even for the territory I'm not one person who just comes to speak negative but if you hear me say this please pray in the name of Jesus that there will not be a resurgence of bombings and a resurgence of strange kidnapping not of ordinary people but of political figures within the place this is the devil and in the name of Jesus we don't celebrate negative things coming to pass we superimpose it by the power that raised Christ from the dead in one minute pray for this region and pray for your region don't say it does not concern me please lift your voice and pray we administer priesthood over the earth city we declare in the name of jesus as sons and daughters of light kings and priests we declare god's power has come no further shall you go in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. First, I want you to agree. Two things in one. Have you written your prayer request? Now, this is what I want you to do very quickly. Please just pass it to... Pass it. Nobody's reading it, so you just feel free. Pass it to the last person by maybe the left or the right aisle, whichever those please all the overflows let's do same outside if you're following from any nation you can send it to our social media platforms it's time for us to pray we're going to pray for the sick as well as collect the prayer requests right now praise the name of the lord how many of us are trusting the lord to touch us or touch our loved ones we believe in miracles will take 10 minutes to make this happen very quickly in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ 
as we worship in your presence there is healing the holy spirit's gentle touch is flowing jesus we There is healing in your name. Please lay your hands right now as a prophetic point of contact. Those following on TV, you are following on any of our social media platforms outside. Connect now by faith. Connect now by faith. Every nation, every territory, we believe in the God that heals whilst you're submitting your prayer request very quickly please lay your hands there if it's a part of your body you cannot touch just make contact with your chest and i want to pray for you right now i truly believe in the supernatural power of the holy spirit i believe in miracles and signs and wonders now watch this please this is what we're going to do this will be very very fast very fast let's walk together i'm going to rebuke that devil and release the power of the Holy Spirit over you. The moment I do that, I want you to begin to check yourself. And I'm going to give you an opportunity for as many who have been touched by God, whether you're inside or outside, the moment I'm praying. Some of you, whilst you came out here, miracles were already happening to you. Check yourself. You'll find out that a miracle has happened. I'd like you to run. Come and stand by my left or my right, whichever. There will be people to just check you and we'll take a few miracles then we'll pray over the request and i prophesy over you and we're done praise the name of the lord now lay your hands there and let's pray this is a house of healing this is a house of miracles in the name of jesus christ Please shout a loud amen in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I command every devil of infirmity causing pain and discomfort over anyone's body here release them now in the name of Jesus release them in the name of jesus right now i declare life to your body in the mighty name of jesus christ be healed in jesus name be healed in jesus name blind eyes be open now if you're here and you're on crutches or you're on wheelchair stand leave that crutch and begin to walk now by the power of the holy ghost in the name of jesus christ be healed blood conditions all kinds of blood conditions be healed right now the lord is healing peptic ulcer in the name of jesus christ be healed abdominal pains of all sorts be healed in the name of jesus there's someone you don't hear very well with your left ear check it now the power of God is touching you right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ in the mighty name of Jesus Christ cancer regardless the stage be healed right now I'm seeing at least two two three ladies you have lump on the left side of your breast in Jesus name we command that devil to leave you now in the name of Jesus Christ there's someone the Lord is healing and restoring your sense of smell supernatural restoration in the name of Jesus blood condition this is like leukemia in the name of Jesus I declare a miracle right now by the power of the Holy Spirit joint pains joint pains in the name of Jesus Christ I declare every pain around the joint area be healed now in Jesus name there's someone you had a dream 
and in that dream it's like someone hit you with a hard object when you came out from that dream you've had pains all over your body till now the power of god is touching you right now following online we minister the power of the holy spirit be healed right now be healed right now whether i mention your case or not in the name of jesus be healed someone with a severe pain around your left your left leg the power of god is touching you right now i'm seeing a miracle happening around your left leg let there be healing in jesus name the lord is showing me a woman you woke up from a dream and physically like your hair was cut like removed a portion of it and from that time you've it's been ill health after ill health the lord is healing you right now someone you're having around your your throat area here you're having severe pain and it's, it's like swelling and discomfort this has been so for a while i minister the life and the power of jesus be healed now in jesus name now anyone sick from the crown of your head migraine the lord is healing several people with migraine be healed right now in the name of jesus christ be healed right now in the name of jesus now those who have been healed from the start of the service and those who are checking themselves now please check yourself very quickly you find out that the power of god has touched you be bold make your way to the front as we celebrate them those from outside if they are coming from outside for healing please allow them come are you celebrating miracles miracles are happening check yourself and make your way to the front right now make your way to the front right now in the name of jesus christ koinonia is this the best you can do jesus is touching people touching people from outside quickly quickly it's in you lord it's in you lord we know there's more that's found in you it's in you lord it's in you lord we know there's more that's found in you it's in you lord it's in you lord we know there's more that's found in you it's in you lord Let's, let's take a few testimonies we may not have time to take so much but let the people come please sit for a few minutes whoever is ready yes sir please help us with the mic very quickly let's celebrate a few miracles here and then go ahead yes the lord has actually started very fantastic things amongst us hallelujah amen praise god i've had severe abdominal pain for over a year abdominal pain yes and right now also it's gone completely gone yes sir. celebrate jesus place your hand there in the name of jesus go now in the name of jesus christ yes please apostle partial deafness has just been healed My left leg, this is the result that's your the test result the test result they told me i have profound loss to total hearing loss and where I'm hearing 25 the both ears and right now Yes, he made mention, he specifically mentioned that of the left ear, and the left ear was the one that had the worst result. And, and right now, it's open. From the back. Give Jesus the praise. Come on. My God. I stretch my hands and I declare perfection on your ears. It never returns again. In Jesus' name, I pray. Yes, please. These two people, they've had severe back pain. Back pain? Back pain. They For how long, bend. sir? They couldn't bend six months now six months my god koinonia are you celebrating miracles now they can bend comfortably bend and check yourself any pain any pain both this, of you this one of our medical officials too oh <laughs> you are <laughs> oh dear beautiful so now god will heal you and then you get to your work one of our medical people has been healed too by the power of the holy spirit amen everyone receives in this house i stretch my hands let there be miracles right now in jesus name there are so many people maybe a few of them can come here very quickly yes please very quickly swelling on the neck disappears swelling swelling on the neck There's how long give her the mic 
How long? Very quickly. For one week, here was swelling up. It was swelling, yes. and it's gone right now. Yes, In the name of Jesus, it never returns again. Don't commonize miracles. This is how God is opening doors in your life too. Swelling, in Jesus' name. Swelling in our throats too for like six Swelling. Months. Yes. It's not swelling, but this long thing that is inside was touching my tongue and I was feeling uncomfortable. Okay. And now... I'm it's gone completely. I stretch my hands and I declare in the name of Jesus, perfection for you in Jesus' name. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. I have a problem with my leg. Whenever I sit down for long, when I stand up, I fall weak. The leg just become weak and I just fall down. You fall down? Yes. So, but ever since I came to this service, I'm not conscious of standing up. Like, I feel free now Run. with the leg. Try to jump. Any pain? In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare perfection for you now. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Apostle, since he was a small boy, he's had problems with his chest with breathing. But now? Breathing. Yes, I had problems with the chest. So when I was sitting at the basement, I was not feeling comfortable breathing. So when you say we should put our hands in our chest, yes. so I decided to just put it by as faith. usual. So when I just put my hands, so normally I search for fresh air to breathe. If I go through this way, I see that the place is stuffy. I go to the next place. And right now? Yes, yeah, so I've been breathe, walking around. Breathe in and out. Any pain? No, Any sir. pain? Give no, Jesus sir. praise. We declare it will never return to you again by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, please. Also, growth in the neck for four years. Growth in the neck? Gone. Yes, sir. Since 2017. Since 2017. Yes. I had my a God. dream that someone forced something down my throat. I was struggling. And when I woke up, it has been... Everything like that. that is not the planting of God, it returns back to the devil. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. Yes, but please. A similar experience for one. My mom, she's at home. She has this swelling on her neck. Then she said to me this message. I should pray for her. Why are you praying? I placed my hand on my neck. I prayed for her. After I finished praying, I called her. I told her, Mom, how is your neck? She told me she's perfectly okay now. Where is she? She's at home. Where is home? She's at Anambra State. Okay All the now. way from Anambra yes, State. Sir. Those following online in the name of Jesus Christ, let there be miracles and breakthroughs for you Amen. by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yes, please. Apostle, she has had dislocation in her hand. She even came with the bandage, but now dislocation. Is Where is the bandage? Lift it up. It. What couldn't you do before? You couldn't do this. Go ahead. Lift it. Let the devil see both the bandage and your healed hands supernatural miracle come listen brothers and sisters you see let me tell you something here yeah? the working of miracles is a gift and a grace if you don't have it you don't have it if it's there it is there praise the lord but then the side effect in a house that miracles easily happen just like water is that sometimes we may commonize the workings of miracles and what god is doing every one of these miracles you see there is a story of tragedy and pain this is deliverance. This is healing that God is bringing for them. We rejoice with you and we declare you go back home and tell them this is what happens when we come to church. God bless you. Bless you, my dear. Yes, please. So this has been confirmed by a medical official. She had a topic pregnancy. She was operated upon and then she has been in severe pain. Severe she pain. She could not even work. What's your name, now? my dear? From Gen Patients, boy. And then you have a problem. A topic pregnancy. Yes. She was operated and she's been having pain yes. number one that pain is perfected Amen. number two in the name of jesus we declare that you will be a joyful mother of children Amen. in jesus name i pray Amen. god bless you yes sir apostle since 2014 he's had moving objects he feels things moving around him and now persecution sir sir because of persecution i came from meduguri sir because of persecution yes moving all objects. over yes they want to force they want to give me sir in the name of Jesus yes. Christ, perfection. I stretch my hands right now. May the power of the Holy Spirit touch you. And in Jesus' name, every demonic thing, I'm seeing you inside a coffin. I declare now, as I'm praying for you, in the name of Jesus, everything that is a programming of death, be delivered from it now. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes, please. pain several pains in the name of jesus christ 
I decree and I declare over you, all of you with all sorts of pain, let there be healing for you right now. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Yes, sir. Pain from ectopic pregnancy, gone. Hallelujah. This issue of pregnancy and this demonic thing, we stand by the God of heaven and we declare, you will not get pregnant and lose it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every spirit that continues to make that you get pregnant and then it doesn't work, you give your best, you try and it does not work, I curse it right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. My dear, be healed by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Yes, please, very quickly. Apostle, the Lord is indeed faithful. Amen. She's had 17 seizures yesterday. 17, 17 seizures? The mother has the records here. She keeps record of these. Madam, talk. Don't cry. Just talk quickly. One Sir, minute. When she turned 12, like I was last year, she just started misbehaving. She used to have seizure, maybe in a minute. Yes. If she's having anything in her hand, she will throw it. She will naked herself. Then the thing what? started this year in the school. It was not doing her in the school, but it began to progress. It started in the school. The seizure started. We were praying. So, uh, what they happened saw, now? They are, Yesterday, because of this miracle service, I've been asking God to heal her. Yesterday, I started taking records. It, the seizure started around 12.20 a.m. in the night. As I recorded till night. Uh, what, and what has p.m. happened now? 17. But today, I started at 2.20. Since this service started, the last seizure was 5.11. And she's not had any seizure. She has not had it till now. My dear, what's yes. your name? Esther. Esther. Esther, I rebuke every spirit that wants to destroy the destiny of this our beautiful daughter. Seizures in the name of Jesus. See, I'm praying for the daughter and is the mother, the power of God is coming on. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, I decree and declare if it's a pattern within that family, we break it now. Amen. By the way, let me speak over everyone. Any pattern you have seen, recurrent patterns, happens to loved ones and is happening to you in the name of jesus christ that pattern comes to an end now that pattern comes to an end now hallelujah please let's just take two two and then two two and then we we'll just you can document the rest and they can have it next week yes very quickly in her body for the past 10 years she said she could literally feel 10 body. years you feel breathing, objects breathing, in your body breathing but immediately you call the case now she's completely gone well. my dear it will never return to you again in the name of jesus it will never return to you again by the power of the holy spirit be free now be free forever in jesus name i pray amen and amen yes, yes please mama said in the dream somebody hit her hand here and then she in the physical and then she could not turn the hand she could not turn her hand and the give her the mic quickly no no don't hold it just talk mama a woman in the ceremony hit me on my shoulder when i even came here sometimes i cannot turn i have to turn with my whole body but when i came my hand was paining me if you say raise up your hands for prayers if i want to raise my hand will hook me but now when you prayed come on koinonia jesus and then she couldn't see properly but now her vision is perfect i have glaucoma i have cataract and i have diabetes rhinopathy i was not seeing people's face hold on please yes well listen after the prayers if you pray i'll put my hands on my eyes and now I can see people's face. Hmm. She came and from Zion. Apostle, uh, Apostle, he knows me very well. He has contributed on my life. I'm not at even Zaria. I'm, not sure. I'm Mommy Lucille. Okay. Mommy Lavinia. 
Oh, they are my part goodness. Of, they are part of your members. I used to come for the Mama prayers. Mama God has healed you now. I came Let the devil see it again. Look at this. Are you celebrating with this family? Listen. My brothers and sisters. Not all miracles are stage managed. There are real, genuine miracles. May that be your story in Jesus' name. Amen. Mama, you are healed now and we declare you are healed forever Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Confirmed by the medical official, she had breast lump but it's gone, disappeared. Breast lump? Yes, sir. When you mentioned it, confirmed. Completely gone. Confirmed by the medical team. Yes, sir. Confirmed. In the name of Jesus, celebrate Jesus. Everything that is planted in your life that is not of God, we uproot it right now. In Jesus' name. Yes, sir. Also, the three of them have similar cases with their needs. But today, in standard, the Lord healed. How long? The Lord has healed them. Yesterday, I had an last Okay, now I'm free now. Completely. Check yourselves. Check yourselves. Mine was eight months. I fell in a ditch and my bone shifted. And after the massage, if I sit down for too long, I'd feel the pain. So last miracle service, I had my miracle, but... I was too shy to come out, but this miracle service and when you talked about kneecap, I just keyed into it and the pain is gone. In the name of Jesus, we declare perfection by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, please. Apostle, this is amazing. I think it's better we hear from her. Yes, go ahead. Don't hold it, just speak, my dear. Okay, so um, I, have been, I had a baby in April and since I had the baby, I've been feeling unsettled in my brain. I knew something was not right. So on Friday, I went to do a brain MRI. And it turns out that I have a mast that is resting on my optic nerve. You had a mast? It, they called it between. Let three. doctor talk. Explain it for us. Just one minute, very quickly. It's a pituitary tumor. Yeah, so it sits on the optic nerve, which is responsible for vision. So that's why she's been having the blurring of vision. And then it's also responsible for production of hormones that regulates the body. So that's why she's been having the um, upset in the hormones. I, was, I had a baby and I, I wasn't able to breastfeed my baby because, um, because of this. My prolactin levels were okay. very low, even lower than the average female. So what happened now? So while the administration was going on, I, well, after the prayer, I just felt that everywhere was suddenly clear. Like I could see clearly. And Hallelujah. I felt like a fresh breeze from yes. this, from my head to the sole Upon of my you. feet. And I, I, don't, I don't know what that is. I was sitting down. I was telling my neighbor that I don't know if I should come outside. But I just decided to come out. Don't cry. Don't cry. Jesus is Lord. I stretch my hands towards you, my dear. I declare perfection. You go to the hospital, have a thorough test. You will come and stand here and testify before God's people. Every demon, every mast, anywhere around your body, your face, we declare it gives way now. Yeah. In the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus Christ. Yes, please. I was a pile for six years. Pile? I've just been here. Yeah, In I'm having pile for six years now. But today I believe that God has healed me. Because, Completely. Uh, yes. And also yesterday I did a test of hepatitis B. But trusting God that this my coming to this point now i'm healed yes. in jesus name in the name of jesus healing for you the last the last one or two please and then we'll just pray generally majority of them pain in all the of them pain the in the name of jesus christ healed. for all of you who are here remaining by the power of the holy spirit and those who are going we apologize for the sake of time we may not be able to take the testimonies we do not downplay the testimonies but in the name of jesus your healings remain permanent by the power of the Holy Spirit. The same hand that healed you will preserve you and keep you healed in Jesus' name. Please rise up on your feet. Stretch your hands here. Rise up on your feet. Stretch your hands. Even as we speak, we have a covenant of answered prayer from Scripture and then with God in this house. In one minute. Now, listen, let me tell you, this, in my opinion, is one of the most powerful part of the miracle service because this is the most accurate representation of our desires. We may not be able to prophesy because of time and because we see in part. But everyone's expectation is here. 
world over i like you to release your faith in one minute and begin to make declarations as i pray that these egyptians you see today you will see them no more forever go ahead and pray in the name of Jesus. Shkete prenda kata prada kata bala daba kata. Shkete prenda kete parata kata parato siya. Shaba bala kota liya. Rete bala ta siyam bakote prende seta. Shaba bala koti ha. Adi siya de emota kuba lekote. Shaba bala kata prando zeberi anderota. of Jesus who is the son of the living God I bow my knees to the father of our Lord and I declare right now that every request that is represented here by the power that raised Christ from the dead we turn it into a testimony in the name of Jesus Christ every death sentence written here we declare in the name of Jesus it will not come to pass I decree and I declare that every human agent that must come in partnership with the Holy Spirit to make these requests become testimonies we provoke their ministries right now and I speak to you by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ that these Egyptians that you see today, you see them no more forever. You see them no more forever. You see them no more forever. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare over your life by the power that raised Christ from the dead, where doors have closed for you. In the name of Jesus, as you return from this mountain, step into a realm of open doors please believe believe every prophetic word step into a realm of open doors those trusting god for jobs in the name of jesus for some of you by next week i declare by the spirit of god you return with miracle jobs where you have not experienced favor in your life i release my faith with you experience strange levels of favor you have honored me even through this weekend of my birthday i pray shame and dishonor let it be far from your life forever i pray for your spiritual life a fresh hunger for the things of God a fresh hunger for prayer and fasting a fresh hunger for the study of scripture in the name of Jesus Christ and finally let me pray for you everything you have seen or God told you should come into your hand and has not yet manifested I declare the grace for performance the grace for manifestation the grace for performance the grace for manifestation may it come upon you right now 
and everything you have started and yet you've not finished may the finishers anointing come upon you now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus we're wrapping up now please July I'd like you to come with your heart open because we're going to do we're starting a very powerful series on the Holy Spirit and the mysteries of the anointing listen please I like you to don't just come to church come with your spirit your mind open we're going to learn the ministry of the Holy Spirit and understand the dynamics of the workings of the anointing praise the name of the Lord hallelujah are you blessed very quickly lend me two minutes to make an altar call we cannot but make an altar call before we are done tonight please keep standing i know you've, you've you've been standing for a while just be patient we are done you are here even though our time is far gone but you are saying apostle i need jesus i cannot afford to leave this place without jesus either to hand over your life completely and receive of his life or to rededicate your life wherever you are please leave your seat very quickly we have just one minute for you if you're in any overflow please you walk to your overflow let's minimize movement please so that we allow those who are making this decision to come god bless you my brother i believe he's not the only one someone else is joining him someone that courage very quickly god bless you please stand look at our little one here are you celebrating this boy if you're coming please come quickly run to jesus whatever you ask of me whatever you ask of me i surrender if you're coming come quickly please we have one minute for you and we'll pray the prayer of salvation whatever you ask of me i surrender one more time whatever you ask for me whatever you ask praise the lord thank you for making that bold decision you who are here and all who are lifting their hands in your various overflows outside and those following online please lift your right hand high to heaven and say this after me say lord jesus say it again lord jesus tonight I have heard your word I believe that you died for me I believe that you shed your blood for my sin tonight I make Jesus my Savior my Lord and my King I declare that I am a recipient of eternal life I also receive the abundance of grace even the gift of righteousness and I declare that I reign in life the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken from my life I am for Jesus today and forever amen keep those hands lifted father I commend these precious ones to you let the grace that keep may that grace keep them let the grace that lift may that grace lift them i commend you to the ministry of the word and even the ministry of the holy spirit may you be built may you be established in righteousness in the name of jesus christ i pray amen and amen thank you for this bold decision there's a gentleman waving the placard smiling at you the counselors please to my right which is your left let's celebrate them as they go hallelujah praise the name of the lord Thank you very much for your patience. I'd like us um, for one last time to honor Pastor Elijah Oyelade. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being a blessing to us tonight, a blessing to the nations, and particularly all those who flew in from outside this country. Thank you. Thank you. We love you. We appreciate you. We pray that the Lord will bless you. You will go from glory to glory, from grace to grace in jesus name after the grace please do well to just greet someone by your left and right on your way out and please 
um be cautious so that you don't hit people let there be no stampede let's move in an orderly manner everybody will find his or her way out eventually the lord bless you in jesus name can we share the grace please the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit let it rest and abide with us now and forevermore amen the lord bless you and see you next week i will taste and see that you are good i will taste and see that you are good i will taste and see that you are
Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.